Wait, before we start, do you want a bundle of 30 printable Swahili PDF cheat sheets, teaching you words and phrases for conversations for free? Then click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get access. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Diana. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lesson at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what we have learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is... Kulivu. Boring. Kulivu. Kulivu. Boring. Kazi yangu ni kulivu. My job is boring. Kazi yangu ni kulivu. Sisimua. Exciting. Sisimua. Sisimua. Exciting. Sinema hiyo ilikuwa ya kusisimua. The movie was very exciting. Sinema hiyo ilikuwa ya kusisimua. Muhimu. Important. Muhimu. Muhimu. Important. Familia sio jambo muhimu, ni kila kitu. Family is not an important thing, it's everything. Familia si jambo muhimu. Ni kila kitu. Kadi ya mikopo. Credit card. Kadi ya mikopo. Kadi ya mikopo. Credit card. J, wewe huchukua kadi ya mikopo? Do you take credit card? J, wewe huchukua Kadi ya mikopo. Ufunguo. Ki. Ufunguo. Ufunguo. Ki. Nilitafuta ufunguo uliopotea kwa saa mbili. I searched two hours for the lost key. Nilitafuta ufunguo uliopotea kwa saa mbili. Kibali cha kuendesha gari. Driver's license. Kibali cha kuendesha gari. Kibali cha kuendesha gari. Driver's license. J. Una kibali cha kuendesha gari? Do you have a driver's license? J. Una kibali cha kuendesha gari? Msitu forest msitu msitu forest walikuwa wameenda kushani kwenye msitu they had gone for an adventure in the forest walikuwa wameenda kushani kwenye msitu mto river mto Mto. River. Watu huvuka mto kwa migu. People cross the river by foot. Watu huvuka mto kwa migu. Bahari. Ocean. Bahari. Bahari. Ocean. Poe wa bahari anatambaa upesi kwenye sakafu ya bahari. 
The sea urchin is crawling quickly along the ocean floor. Poe wa bahari anatambao upesi kwenye sakafu ya bahari. Ziwa. Lake. Ziwa. Ziwa. Lake. Huyo bata maji anaogelea kwa ziwa. The swan is swimming in the lake. Huyo bata maji anaogelea kwa ziwa. Hati. Document. Hati. Hati. Document. Kama huta niletea hizo hati haraka iweze kanavyo, umefutwa. If you don't bring me the documents as soon as possible, you're fired. Kama huta niletea hizo hati haraka iweze kanavyo, umefutwa. Computer. 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 Nawasha computer yangu. I turn on my computer. Nawasha computer yangu. Nukunishi. Fax machine. Nukunishi. Nukunishi. Fax machine. J, una nukunishi? Do you have a fax machine? J, una nukunishi? Printer. 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 Printer yenyewe ina kiwango cha chini cha kelele. The printer has a low noise level. Printer yenyewe ina kiwango cha chini cha kelele. Penseli ya umekanika. Mechanical pencil. Penseli ya umekanika. Penseli ya umekanika. Mechanical pencil. Ile penseli ya umekanika nyekundu iko na kifutio cha kijani. The red mechanical pencil has a green eraser. Ile penseli ya umekanika nyekundu iko na kifutio cha kijani. Ruler. 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 Natumia ruler kuchora laini. I use a ruler to draw lines. Natumia ruler kuchora laini. Kalamu ya wino. Maka. Kalamu ya wino. Kalamu ya wino. Maka. Kalamu ya wino inaisha wino. The maka is running low on ink. Kalamu ya wino inaisha wino. Benki. Bank. Benki. Benki. Bank. Benki liko wapi? Where is the bank? Benki liko wapi? Duka. Convenience store. Duka. Duka. Convenience store. Enda pale kwa duka ununue maziwa. Go to the convenience store and buy some milk. Enda pale kwa duka ununue maziwa. Hospitali. Hospital. Hospitali. Hospitali. Hospital. Tulimpeleka hospitalini jana. We took him to the hospital yesterday. Tulimpeleka hospitalini jana. Well done. 
In this lesson, you expounded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipodwano1.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanachagua hoteli. Watachagua hoteli gani? Tunapaswa kuamua hoteli ya safari yetu ya mwezi ujao. Sawa. Wacha tuchunguze kwa mtandao. Hoteli ya bahari iko karibu na pwani. Inasema dola moja na ishirini kwa usiku kwa mtu. Na unapewa kifungua kinywa cha kujihudumia mwenyewe. Ni vipi kuhusu hoteli ya Pine? Ni dola themanini kwa usiku. Sitaki kupoteza gharama nyingi kwa makao. Hmm. Lakini hoteli ya Pine ni mbali kutoka pwani na jijini na inasema utalipia Wi-Fi. Na vipi hoteli ya Sunrise? Kawaida hugaramia dola arobaini kwa usiku. Lakini sasa kuna ukuzaji na tunaweza ishi usiku mmoja kwa dola tisini. Liko katika pwani na jiji. Pia ina Wi-Fi bure. Linaonekana nzuri. E, subiri. Linasema mpango huu ni wa wiki ijayo tu. E, si kuona hiyo. Hivyo basi, mahali hapa je, hoteli ya Royal. Liko katikati ya jiji na inagaremia dola moja kwa usiku. Chumba hakifana ni nzuri, lakini kuna wifi ya bure. Sawa, wacha tu hifadhi hoteli hii. Ala, tayari imehifadhiwa kikamilifu. Laiti. Hivyo basi nadhani ya kwanza ni bora. Je, imejaa? La sivyo. Watachagua hoteli gani? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanachagua hoteli. Watachagua hoteli gani? Tunapaswa kuamua hoteli ya safari yetu ya mwezi ujao. Sawa. Wacha tuchunguze kwa mtandao. Hoteli ya bahari iko karibu na pwani. Inasema dola moja na ishirini kwa usiku kwa mtu. Na unapewa kifungua kinywa cha kujihudumia mwenyewe. Ni vipi kuhusu hoteli ya Pine? Ni dola themanini kwa usiku. Sitaki kupoteza gharama nyingi kwa makao. Hmm. Lakini hoteli ya Pine ni mbali kutoka pwani na jijini. Na inasema utalipia Wi-Fi. Na vipi hoteli ya Sunrise? Kawaida hugaramia dola moja arobaini kwa usiku. Lakini sasa kuna ukuzaji na tunaweza ishi usiku mmoja kwa dola tisini. Liko katika pwani na jiji. Pia ina Wi-Fi bure. Linaonekana nzuri. E, subiri. Linasema mpango huu ni wa wiki ijayo tu. E, si kuona hiyo. Hivyo basi, mahali hapa je, hoteli ya Royal. Liko katikati ya jiji na inagaremia dola moja kwa usiku. Chumba hakifana ni nzuri, lakini kuna Wi-Fi ya bure. Sawa. Wacha tu hifadhi hoteli hii. Ala, tayari imehifadhiwa kikamilifu. Laiti. Hivyo basi nadhani ya kwanza ni bora. Je, imejaa? La sivyo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In this video, you learned 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Diana. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lesson at the end. 
So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what we have learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is pochi, wallet, pochi, pochi, wallet. Pochi yake ilibiwa kwenye treni miezi kadha iliopita. His wallet was stolen in the train station a couple of months ago. Pochi yake ilibiwa kwenye treni miezi kadha iliopita. Mkoba. Pass. Mkoba. Mkoba. Pass. Huu ni mkoba mkubwa. This is a big pass. Huu ni mkoba mkubwa. Agiza. Oda. Agiza. Agiza. Oda. Tunaweza agiza kwa mtandao. Can we order online? Tunaweza agiza kwa mtandao. Uwanja. Field. Uwanja. Uwanja. Field. Tumeenda kucheza uwanjani. We have gone to play in the field. Tumeenda kucheza uwanjani. Jangwa. Desert. Jangwa. Jangwa. Desert. Jua linachomoza jangwa lililojoto. The sun is eating the hot desert. Jua linachomoza jangwa lililojoto. Bossy. Boss. Bossy. Bossy. Boss. Bossy wangu ananikasirisha. My boss is annoying. Bossy wangu ananikasirisha. Afisi. Office. Afisi. Afisi. Office. Bwana, ushawahi tembelea hizo afisi? Sa, have you visited those offices? Bwana, ushawahi tembelea hizo afisi? Mfanyikazi mwenzangu. Kowaka. Mfanyikazi mwenzangu. Mfanyikazi mwenzangu. Kowaka. Ningelipenda kuongea na mfanyikazi mwenzangu kuhusu jambo lililofanyika Jumatatu. I would like to talk to my coworker regarding last Monday's incident. Ningelipenda kuongea na mfanyikazi mwenzangu kuhusu jambo lililofanyika Jumatatu. Mkutano. Meeting. Mkutano. Mkutano. Meeting. J. Tunaweza jadilia jambo hili wakati wa mkutano uliofuata? Can we discuss this matter during the following meeting? J. Tunaweza kujadili jambo hili wakati wa mkutano uliofuata? Kituo cha polisi. Police station. Kituo cha polisi. Kituo cha polisi. Police station. Gari za polisi zimeegezwa nje ya kituo cha polisi. The police cars are parked outside the police station. Gari za polisi zimeegezwa nje ya kituo cha polisi. Duka la dawa. Pharmacy. 
Duka la dawa. Duka la dawa. Pharmacy. J. Kuna duka la dawa karibu? Is there a pharmacy nearby? J. Kuna duka la dawa karibu? Duka la kuoka mikate. Bakery. Duka la kuoka mikate. Duka la kuoka mikate. Bakery. Yeye huenda kwenye duka la kuoka mikate kila jumapili na watoto wake. She goes to the bakery every Sunday with her kids. Yeye huenda kwenye duka la kuoka mikate kila jumapili na watoto wake. Ukumbi wa sinema. Movie theater. Ukumbi wa sinema. Ukumbi wa sinema. Movie theater. Unataka kutembelea ukumbi wa sinema upi? Which movie theater do you want to visit? Unataka kutembelea ukumbi wa sinema upi? Mazungumzo. Negotiation. Mazungumzo. Mazungumzo. Negotiation. Baada ya miezi miwili ya mazungumzo, nchi hizi mbili ziliweza kufikia makubaliano. After two years of negotiation, the two countries were finally able to come to an agreement. Baada ya miezi miwili ya mazungumzo, nchi hizi mbili ziliweza kufikia makubaliano. Mkataba. Contract. Mkataba. Mkataba. Contract. Siwezi kukubali mkataba wake tena. I cannot accept his contract ever again. Siwezi kukubali mkataba wake tena. Biashara. Business. Biashara. Biashara. Business. Gharama ya kuanza biashara hapa Kenya iko juu sana. The cost of starting up a business here in Kenya is very high. Gharama ya kuanza biashara hapa Kenya iko juu sana. Mapatano. Deal. Mapatano. Ma pa ta no. Deal. Tuko na mapatano. We have a deal. Tuko na mapatano. Shuguli. Busy. Shuguli. Shuguli. Busy. J. Ratiba yako ya sasa ina shuguli mingi? How busy is your current schedule? J. Ratiba yako ya sasa ina shuguli mingi? Hatari. Serious. Hatari. Hatari. Serious. Mshuko wa moyo ni ugonjwa hatari wa akili. Depression is a very serious mental illness. Mshuko wa moyo ni ugonjwa hatari wa akili. Choka. Tired. Choka. Choka. Tired. Mimi huchoka haraka sana. I get tired very quickly. Mimi huchoka haraka sana. Well done! In this lesson, you expounded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipodwano1.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri!
Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke na mwanamme wanaongea. Mwanamke alifanya nini jana? Ilikuwa inanyesha kwa nguvu jana. Ulienda nyumbani vipi? Kulikuwa na watu wengi kwenye basi, kwa hivyo singeweza ingia na nikawa natafuta taxi. Kwa hivyo ulirudi na taxi? La, hakuna yeyote iliyopatikana. Nini? Kwa hivyo ulirudi ukitembea? Sio mbali? Sivyo. Nilitembea hadi nusu ya safari kisha nikakumbuka kuwa nyumba rafiki yangu kwa karibu. Hivyo nikashinda huko. Oh, una bahati. Ilinibidi kutembea hadi nyumbani. Mwanamke alifanya nini jana? Mwanamke na mwanamme wanaongea. Mwanamke alifanya nini jana? Ilikuwa inanyesha kwa nguvu jana. Ulienda nyumbani vipi? Kulikuwa na watu wengi kwenye basi, kwa hivyo singeweza ingia na nikawa natafuta taxi. Kwa hivyo ulirudi na taxi? La, hakuna yeyote iliyopatikana. Nini? Kwa hivyo ulirudi ukitembea? Sio mbali? Sivyo. Nilitembea hadi nusu ya safari kisha nikakumbuka kuwa nyumba rafiki yangu kwa karibu. Hivyo nikashinda huko. Oh, una bahati. Ilinibidi kutembea hadi nyumbani. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You are at a train station where you stumble across a large notice on a bulletin board. What does the notice say? What does the notice say? The notice reads, Express trains will not run on New Year's Day. Hii nje ya basi, haita hudumu siku ya mwaka mpia. Did you download your free PDF cheat sheets yet? These conversation cheat sheets are an easy way to speak more because you get cheat sheets for conversational topics like the weather, family, hobbies, and much more. And inside, you'll learn common questions and answers that you'd use in conversations, as well as tons of vocabulary. Don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description to get access. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the easiest way to start writing and improve on your own. Are you learning a language on your own? If so, you might have wondered if you can actually improve by yourself and what kinds of things you can do when you don't have a teacher. Today you'll discover why writing is an easy way to learn a language, how to practice writing with our lessons on your own time, and how to get our free writing workbooks. Find these at the end. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. 
first, the giving a speech cheat sheet. If you want to be able to give a speech about yourself and your target language, check out this cheat sheet. It'll give you all the must-know phrases. Second, the ultimate guide to beginner language. This ebook will teach you all the phrases a beginner needs to know. How to talk about family, how to talk about food, basic phrases, and much more. Third, words and phrases for HR and recruitment processes. If you want to talk about finding a job, or if you work in HR, then don't miss this one minute lesson. It'll teach you keywords and phrases essential to your goals. Fourth, how to talk about health problems. This one minute lesson will teach you important phrases that will help you express yourself when you're feeling sick. Fifth, top 20 words for negative emotions. If you want to be able to talk about your feelings, take a look at this lesson. You'll learn key words for negative emotions in just a few minutes. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The easiest way to start writing and improve on your own. Most language learners start with reading or speaking first. We all want to speak. Typically, most learners start their studies by reading textbooks or articles online. But writing? Not so many practice writing right away, unless the language has a unique writing system. There are a few reasons you should consider writing when you're learning a language. Let's jump into part one. One, why is writing an easy way to learn a language? So why is writing easy? First, you don't need anyone to start improving right now. When it comes to language learning, we all want feedback and corrections. And for that, we either need a teacher or a learning program that can quiz us. But if you want to improve on your own without waiting on anyone else, or if you don't have access to a teacher, you can start with writing. You'll find out how in just a minute. Second, you don't need to worry about what to write. How does this work? The easiest way to start writing is to copy text from somewhere else. That way, you don't have to worry about what to write or how to spell things. Just get a piece of paper and a pen and copy things from a resource you're using. You can even try doing this with your favorite quotes or ideas. Copy them word by word. Third, it can help you build a strong routine. Imagine you copy two sentences per day. It's simple and it just takes a minute or two. That means you can stick to it on a daily basis. And if you can learn to stick with that, you can stick to other learning routines in the future. And fourth, you'll end up improving all areas of the language. How? Well, if you're copying out a few sentences a day, you'll end up indirectly learning a lot of words, grammar rules, and lines you can actually use, simply because you're exposed to them. And if you read what you write, you'll improve your reading and comprehension skills too. So, how can you actually start writing in practice? Let's move on to part two. Part two, how to practice writing with our lessons on your own time. Number one, if you're taking our lessons, write out the phrases, sentences, and conversations by hand. This means writing every phrase and sentence that you learn in the lessons by hand in a notebook. You can also write out the conversations in the dialogue study tool, example sentences from the lesson notes, words and phrases from our vocabulary lists, and words and sentences from the Daily Dose app and the word of the day. Number two, write short sentences to your Premium Plus teacher. If you're a Premium Plus member, write a message and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for review. In fact, as a first step, all new Premium Plus users have to write a self-introduction and send it to their teachers. Your teacher will review your work, send feedback, corrections, and help you improve your writing skills fast. You can even write something out by hand, take a picture of it, and send it to your teacher. Number three, leave a comment on the lessons. After you're done with a lesson, be sure to use what you've learned, whether a new word or a grammar point. Leave a comment in the comment section, and our teachers will review it and give you feedback. Number four, dictation. This may be best for advanced learners. Dictation is a study method where you write down what you hear as a way to test your writing and listening skills. You can do this with any one of our audio or video lessons. Number five, create sentences using newly learned words. You can learn new words with our lessons, the word of the day, the vocab lists, and the core 2000 word list, which gives you the 2000 most frequently used words. And, as mentioned before, you can also leave comments for our teachers to review. Number six, take the writing quizzes. With every lesson, you'll get review quizzes to help you master what you've learned. Just scroll down to the vocabulary section or click on vocabulary. Then click on take a quiz and that's it. 
Now you know how to improve your target language on your own. Just copy things out. And by the way, if you want our bonus free beginner level writing workbooks, leave a comment and we'll reply with the link. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about 10 Habits of Highly Effective Language Learners. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anauliza kuhusu uenezaji wa mfumo wa vifaa kwenye maktaba. Wanakopa vifaa ngapi kwa wakati mmoja? Samahani, unaweza nionyesha jinsi ya kuomba vitabu? Je, ni mara yako ya kwanza kutumia maktaba hii? Ndiyo. Sawa basi, nitakuelezea kanuni. Katika maktaba hii unaweza kukopa hadi vitabu sita na CD tano au DVD kila mtu. Hata hivyo, unaweza kukopa tu hadi vitu kumi kwa jumla. Muda wa kukopa ni wiki mbili na kama ungelipenda kuongezea wakati, tafadhali udhibitishe kabla ya muda wake kuisha. Je, waweza kuomba majarida na magazeti pia? Huwezi kuomba magazeti lakini majarida zipo isipokuwa za hivi karibuni. Je, naweza kuzirudisha kwa njia ya posta? Hatuwezi kuzikubali kwa njia ya posta. Tafadhali njoo kwenye hii maktaba kuzirudisha. Baada ya masaa unaweza ziweka kwenye sanduku la kurudisha liliko karibu na mlango. Lakini usitumie sanduku la kurudisha ijapo vifaa vimechelewa. Naona, asante sana. Wanakopa vifaa ngapi kwa wakati mmoja? Mwanamke anauliza kuhusu uenezaji wa mfumo wa vifaa kwenye maktaba. Wanakopa vifaa ngapi kwa wakati mmoja? Samahani, unaweza nionyesha jinsi ya kuomba vitabu? Je, ni mara yako ya kwanza kutumia maktaba hii? Ndiyo. Sawa basi, nitakuelezea kanuni. Katika maktaba hii unaweza kukopa hadi vitabu sita na CD tano au DVD kila mtu. Hata hivyo, unaweza kukopa tu hadi vitu kumi kwa jumla. Muda wa kukopa ni wiki mbili na kama ungelipenda kuongezea wakati, tafadhali udhibitishe kabla ya muda wake kuisha. Je, waweza kuomba majarida na magazeti pia? Huwezi kuomba magazeti lakini majarida zipo isipokuwa za hivi karibuni. Je, naweza kuzirudisha kwa njia ya posta? Hatuwezi kuzikubali kwa njia ya posta. Tafadhali njoo kwenye hii maktaba kuzirudisha. Baada ya masaa unaweza ziweka kwenye sanduku la kurudisha liliko karibu na mlango, lakini usitumie sanduku la kurudisha ijapo vifaa vimechelewa. Naona Asante sana. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Diana. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there's a twist. 
with each new lesson in this series will include the previous lesson at the end. So after you have learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what we have learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is Mku Superior Mku Mku Superior Nina Paswa Nimpe Mku Wangu reporti kila asubui. I have to report to my superior every morning. Nina Paswa Nimpe Mku Wangu reporti kila asubuhi. Kampuni Company Kampuni Kampuni Company Bitie ndiye mfaidi mku katika kampuni hi. His daughter is the major beneficiary in this company. Bintie ndiye mfaidi mku katika kampuni hi. Mshahara. Salary. Mshahara. Mshahara. Salary. Mshahara ni kiasi gani? How much is the salary? Mshahara ni kiasi gani? Radio. 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 Napenda kusikiza radio kabla ya kulala. I like to listen to the radio before going to sleep. Napenda kusikiza radio kabla ya kulala. Runinga. Television. Runinga. Runinga. Television. Nimenunua runinga bapa ya mchina arobaini. I just bought a 40-inch flat screen TV. Nimenunua runinga bapa ya mchi arobaini. Mtandao. Internet. Mtandao. Mtandao. Internet. Ningelipenda kutumia mtandao kwa saa moja. I would like to use the internet for one hour. Ningependelea kutumia mtandao kwa saa moja. Gazeti. Newspaper. Gazeti. Gazeti. Newspaper. Ukimalizia gazeti langu, unirudishie. Return my newspaper when you are finished. Ukimalizia gazeti langu, unirudishie. Kituo cha habari. News channel. Kituo cha habari. Kituo cha habari. News channel. Niliwasha kituo cha habari jioni. I turned on the news channel in the evening. Niliwasha kituo cha habari jioni. Vyombo vya muziki. Musical instrument. Vyombo vya muziki. Vyombo vya muziki. Musical instrument. Kuna aina nyingi ya vyombo vya muziki. There are many kinds of musical instruments. 
kuna aina nyingi ya viombo vya muziki mchoro painting mchoro mchoro painting nilichora huu mchoro mwenyewe i painted this painting myself nilichora huu mchoro mwenyewe ukumbi theater ukumbi u kumbi theater tuna tiketi ya kwenda ukumbini Ijumaa hii usiku we have tickets to the theater for this friday night tuna tiketi ya kwenda ukumbini Ijumaa hii usiku muziki musical muziki muziki musical niko na tiketi ya kwenda kujionea muziki i got tickets to a musical niko na tiketi ya kwenda kujionea muziki opera 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 o p r a opera opera ilianza italiano katika karne ya 16 opera began in italy in the 16th century opera ilianza italiano katika karne ya 16 tulia relax tulia tulia relax tulia ufurahie sinema relax and enjoy the movie tulia ufurahie sinema ubao mweupe whiteboard ubao mweupe ubao mweupe whiteboard Ubao mweupe ndio chombo nzuri cha kuelezea vitu vya picha A whiteboard is a perfect means of demonstrating something visually Ubao mweupe ndio chombo nzuri cha kuelezea vitu vya picha Ubao blackboard Ubao u ba o blackboard mwalimu huandika kwenye ubao the teacher writes on the blackboard mwalimu huandika kwenye ubao mtihani test mtihani m t h a n i test mtihani wa jumatano utakuwa mgumu wednesday's test will be difficult mtihani wa jumatano utakuwa mgumu mwongozo textbook mwongozo mwongozo textbook Mwakani tutakimaliza mwongozo wote. During the year we will cover the entire textbook. Mwakani tutamaliza mwongozo wote. Mbele Front Mbele Mbele Front Weka alama mbele ya jengo. Put the sign on the front of the building. Weka alama mbele ya jengo. Kazi. Job. 
kazi ka zi job nilianza kazi hii mwaka jana i started this job last year nilianza kazi hii mwaka jana well done in this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for your daily conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume analalamika kuhusu bidhaa alizonunua kwenye mtandao. Anaenda kubadilisha nini? Ndio. Hii ni laini ya huduma ya wateja. Samahani, nimepokea hivi sasa nunuzo zangu lakini hii sio niliyoagiza. Tuie radhi. Nini hasa ndio shida? Niliagiza jaketi ya vifunguo tatu. Hii ina vifunguo mbili pekee. Naona, hiyo pengine ni modeli isiyo sawa. Tunaomba msamaha sana kuihusu. Tutabadilisha hiyo mara moja. Kwa hivyo Unaweza kuturudishia kutumia huduma za hamali? Ndio. Pia hili shati ni tofauti na lile nililoona kwenye tovuti yenu. Hii sio nililotarajia, kwa hivyo ningelipenda kulirudisha. Nini ni tofauti? Nilidhani ni tishati bila kola, lakini limetokea kuwa shati la shingo mrefu na kola Naona umeshakata kibandiko Ndio nishakikata lakini hili sio kwa hakika linavyofanana kwa picha Bado waweza kukirudisha Bwana tuna shati hizi kwa aina za zilizo na kola na ambazo hazina kola Data yetu inaonyesha kuwa umechagua lililo nalo Kweli basi inaonekana nilibonyeza bidhaa nisiyotaka. Tunaweza badilisha bidhaa kama bado kina kibandiko, lakini itakuwa ngumu kufanya hivyo kama imeshakatwa. Naona, basi waweza kubadilisha jaketi pekee? Bila shaka. Tena, tuie radhi kwa usumbufu. Anaenda kubadilisha nini? Mwanamume analalamika kuhusu bidhaa alizonunua kwenye mtandao. Anaenda kubadilisha nini? Ndio. Hii ni laini ya huduma ya wateja. Samahani, nimepokea hivi sasa nunuzo zangu, lakini hii sio niliyoagiza. Tuie radhi. Nini hasa ndio shida? Niliagiza jaketi ya vifunguo tatu. Hii ina vifunguo mbili pekee. Naona, hiyo pengine ni modeli isiyo sawa. Tunaomba msamaha sana kuihusu. Tutabadilisha hiyo mara moja. Kwa hivyo, unaweza kuturudishia kutumia huduma za hamali? Ndio. Pia hili shati ni tofauti na lile nililoona kwenye tovuti yenu. Hii sio nililotarajia. Kwa hivyo, Ningelipenda kulirudisha. Nini ni tofauti? Nilidhani ni tishati bila kola, lakini limetokea kuwa shati la shingo mrefu na kola. Naona, umeshakata kibandiko? Ndio, nishakikata, lakini hili sio kwa hakika linavyofanana kwa picha. Bado waweza kukirudisha? Bwana, 
Tuna shati hizi kwa aina za zilizo na kola na ambazo hazina kola. Data yetu inaonyesha kuwa umechagua lililo nalo. Kweli, basi inaonekana nilibonyeza bidhaa nisiyotaka. Tunaweza badilisha bidhaa kama bado kina kibandiko, lakini itakuwa ngumu kufanya hivyo kama imeshakatwa. Naona, basi waweza kubadilisha jaketi pekee. Bila shaka. Tena, tuie radhi kwa usumbufu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mtu anatafuta nyumba ya gorofa. Ni nyumba ipi ya gorofa atakayochagua? Samahani, ninatafuta nyumba ya gorofa katika eneo hii. Unaweza nionyesha rasimu ya baadhi ya gorofa? Bila shaka. Ni ya mtu mmoja? Hapana. Nitaishi na bibi yangu. Nataka sebule, chumba cha kulala na ya kusoma. Sawa. Na hije, kuna vyumba viwili pamoja na sebule ingawa inaweza kuwa na kelele kidogo kwa sababu iko karibu na barabara kubwa. Naona, mimi hufanya kazi nyumbani. Kwa hivyo, nahitaji mahali patulivu. Na ningependa sebule iwe ya umbo wa mraba. Nam, na hije, iko mbali kidogo na stesheni lakini katika eneo tulivu ya makazi kuna vyumba viwili na sebule lakini chumba kimoja ni nyembamba hmm hatuna vitu vingi hivyo basi hii itaweza kututosha tunaweza kukuonyesha gorofa ingine ambayo ina vyumba viwili kubwa lakini iko mbali zaidi na stesheni la asante ningelipenda kwenda kuona ile ya pili ulionionyesha ni nyumba ipi ya gorofa atakayochagua? Mtu anatafuta nyumba ya gorofa. Ni nyumba ipi ya gorofa atakayochagua? Samahani, ninatafuta nyumba ya gorofa katika eneo hii. Unaweza nionyesha rasimu ya baadhi ya gorofa? Bila shaka. Ni ya mtu mmoja? Hapana. Nitaishi na bibi yangu. Nataka sebule, chumba cha kulala na ya kusoma. Sawa. Na hije, kuna vyumba viwili pamoja na sebule ingawa inaweza kuwa na kelele kidogo kwa sababu iko karibu na barabara kubwa. Naona, mimi hufanya kazi nyumbani. Kwa hivyo, nahitaji mahali patulivu. Na ningependa sebule iwe ya umbo wa mraba. Nam. Na hije, iko mbali kidogo na stesheni, lakini katika eneo tulivu ya makazi. Kuna vyumba viwili na sebule, lakini chumba kimoja ni nyembamba. Hmm, hatuna vitu vingi. Hivyo basi, hii itaweza kututosha. Tunaweza kukuonyesha gorofa ingine ambayo ina vyumba viwili kubwa, lakini iko mbali zaidi na stesheni. La asante. Ningelipenda kwenda kuona ile ya pili ulionionyesha. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anapima nguo huko akiongea na karani. Atanunua nguo gani? Inafanana vyema kwako na inakutosha vizuri sana. Naelewa. Inanitosha. Lakini mimi huvaa rangi dhahiri. Sijazoea mtindo huu. Hata hivyo, 
Nadhani unafanana vizuri. Kweli? Itanichukua ujasiri ili niweze kuvaa hivi. Unaonaje rinda hii? Mtindo wake ni nyamavu, hivyo basi haitaangaza vile. Uko sawa. Wacha nijaribu hiyo. Endelea. Unadhania nini kulihusu? Hili ni sawa kwangu kuliko ya kwanza. Una mtindo huu wa mikono mirefu? Ndio tunao. Asante. Nitanunua hiyo. Atanunua nguo gani? Mwanamke anapima nguo huku akiongea na karani. Atanunua nguo gani? Inafanana vyema kwako na inakutosha vizuri sana. Naelewa. Inanitosha. Lakini mimi huvaa rangi dhahiri. Sijazoea mtindo huu. Hata hivyo, nadhani unafanana vizuri. Kweli? Itanichukua ujasiri ili niweze kuvaa hivi. Unaonaje rinda hii? Mtindo wake ni nyamavu, hivyo basi haitaangaza vile. Uko sawa. Wacha nijaribu hiyo. Endelea. Unadhania nini kulihusu? Hili ni sawa kwangu kuliko ya kwanza. Una mtindo huu wa mikono mirefu? Ndio tunao. Asante. Nitanunua hiyo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke yupo kwenye duka kubwa. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Samahani, nguo za watoto ziko wapi? Ziko kwenye gorofa la tano na la sita. Je, una nguo za watoto wachanga pia? Ndiyo. Tuna nguo nyingi za watoto wachanga kwenye gorofa la sita. Asante sana. Nitaenda kuangalia huko. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Mwanamke yupo kwenye duka kubwa. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Samahani, nguo za watoto ziko wapi? Ziko kwenye gorofa la tano na la sita. Je, una nguo za watoto wachanga pia? Ndiyo, tuna nguo nyingi za watoto wachanga kwenye gorofa la sita. Asante sana. Nitaenda kuangalia huko. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's your favorite number? After watching this video, you'll be able to say many numbers and ask someone their favorite number. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Numbers PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni saba. Once more with the English translation. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? What's your favorite number? Ni saba. 
it's seven. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, what's your favorite number? That's... Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Listen to it again. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Ni. Number. It's number. For example, it's seven. Ni saba. Ni saba. Here are a few more numbers you can use with the same pattern. Seven. Saba. Saba. Two. Mbili. Mbili. Four. Nne. Nne. Nine. Tisa. Tisa. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni mbili. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni nne. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni tisa. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's your favorite number? Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Imagine it's two. Do you remember how to say, two? Mbili. Mbili. Say, it's two. Ni mbili. Now answer the question saying, it's two. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni mbili. Now imagine it's four. Do you remember how to say four? Nne. Nne. Say, it's four. Ni nne. Now, answer the question by saying, it's four. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni nne. Now, imagine it's nine. Do you remember how to say nine? Tisa. Tisa. Say, it's nine. Ni tisa. Now, answer the question saying, it's nine. Ni namba gani unayo pendelea? Ni tisa. In this lesson, you learned number-related phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk about numbers. You are now able to count like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell us your favorite number. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye.
How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Yupi ni ndugu mdogo wa mwanamke? Nilisikia una ndugu pacha. Sikujua. Ndio. Lakini watu husema hatufanani. Ona, ndugu yangu yupo katika picha hii. Lakini unaweza sema ni yupi? Naam. Sioni yeyote anayekufanana. Labda huyu aliyevaa kofia. La, si huyo. Ana nywele nyeusi kama mimi. Naam. Basi huyu mrefu. La, yeye si mrefu hivyo. Bado siwezi mpata. Hamfanani sana. Najua. Labda miwani inafanya iwe ngumu zaidi. Miwani basi huyu hapa wa pili kutoka kushoto. Umepata. Je, namfanana? Yupi ni ndugu mdogo wa mwanamke? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Yupi ni ndugu mdogo wa mwanamke? Nilisikia una ndugu pacha. Sikujua. Ndio. Lakini watu husema hatufanani. Ona, ndugu yangu yupo katika picha hii. Lakini unaweza sema ni yupi? Naam. Sioni yeyote anayekufanana. Labda huyu aliyevaa kofia. La, si huyo. Ana nywele nyeusi kama mimi. Naam. Basi huyu mrefu. La, yeye si mrefu hivyo. Bado siwezi mpata. Hamfanani sana. Najua. Labda miwani inafanya iwe ngumu zaidi. Miwani basi huyu hapa wa pili kutoka kushoto. Umepata. Je, namfanana? Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanachagua hoteli. Watachagua hoteli gani? Tunapaswa kuamua hoteli ya safari yetu ya mwezi ujao. Sawa. Wacha tuchunguze kwa mtandao. Hoteli ya bahari iko karibu na pwani. Inasema dola moja na ishirini. kwa usiku kwa mtu. Na unapewa kifungua kinywa cha kujihudumia mwenyewe. Ni vipi kuhusu hoteli ya Pine? Ni dola themanini kwa usiku. Sitaki kupoteza gharama nyingi kwa makao. Hmm. Lakini hoteli ya Pine ni mbali kutoka pwani na jijini. Na inasema utalipia wifi. Na vipi hoteli ya Sunrise? Kawaida hugaramia dola arobaini kwa usiku. Lakini sasa kuna ukuzaji na tunaweza ishi usiku mmoja kwa dola tisini. Liko katika pwani na jiji. Pia ina wifi bure. Linaonekana nzuri. E, subiri. Linasema mpango huu ni wa wiki ijayo tu. E, si kuona hiyo. Hivyo basi, mahali hapa je, hoteli ya Royal. Liko katikati ya jiji na inagaremia dola moja kwa usiku. Chumba hakifanani nzuri, lakini kuna wifi ya bure. Sawa. Wacha tu hifadhi hoteli hii. Ala, tayari imehifadhiwa kikamilifu. Laiti.
Hivyo basi nadhani ya kwanza ni bora. Je, imejaa? La sivyo. Watachagua hoteli gani? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanachagua hoteli. Watachagua hoteli gani? Tunapaswa kuamua hoteli ya safari yetu ya mwezi ujao. Sawa. Wacha tuchunguze kwa mtandao. Hoteli ya bahari iko karibu na pwani. Inasema dola moja na ishirini kwa usiku kwa mtu. Na unapewa kifungua kinywa cha kujihudumia mwenyewe. Ni vipi kuhusu hoteli ya Pine? Ni dola themanini kwa usiku. Sitaki kupoteza gharama nyingi kwa makao. Hmm. Lakini hoteli ya Pine ni mbali kutoka pwani na jijini. Na inasema utalipia Wi-Fi. Na vipi hoteli ya Sunrise? Kawaida hugaramia dola arobaini kwa usiku. Lakini sasa kuna ukuzaji na tunaweza ishi usiku mmoja kwa dola tisini. Liko katika pwani na jiji. Pia ina wifi bure. Linaonekana nzuri. Eh, subiri. Linasema mpango huu ni wa wiki ijayo tu. Eh, si kuona hiyo. Hivyo basi, mahali hapa je, hoteli ya Royal. Liko katikati ya jiji na inagaremia dola moja kwa usiku. Chumba hakifanani nzuri, lakini kuna wifi ya bure. Sawa. Wacha tuhifadhi hoteli hii. Ala, tayari imehifadhiwa kikamilifu. Laiti. Hivyo basi nadhani ya kwanza ni bora. Je, imejaa? La sivyo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. J. Mwanamke alikula nini asubuhi ya leo? U. Ni naisi njaa. J. Ulikula kiwa mshakinywa? Ndiyo, nilikula, lakini kidogo. Je, ulikula nini? Nilikunywa maziwa ganda na kahawa. Hiyo ni kidogo sana. Unapaswa ule mkate na tunda pia. Je, mwanamke alikula nini asubuhi ya leo? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Je, mwanamke alikula nini asubuhi ya leo? U, ni naisi njaa. Je, ulikula kiwa mshakinywa? Ndiyo, nilikula lakini kidogo. Je, ulikula nini? Nilikunywa maziwa ganda na kahawa. Hiyo ni kidogo sana. Unapaswa ule mkate na tunda pia. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at swahilipod101.com. How to get a return on your language learning investment. I'm learning a language, but I'm not sure if it's working or if I'm getting better. Have you ever felt this way? This is a very normal thought to have. But before you go and blame your textbook or your app, let's make sure you're not the one making mistakes. So let's get into part one. You already know the first big reason if you've watched our previous monthly reviews. People often fail because they set vague goals, like I want to be fluent, which they don't know how to achieve. But the second big reason is lack of time. They don't put in the hours. Learning a language is a lot like going to a gym. You get what you put in. For example, if you get a dumbbell and do nothing, nothing happens. It can do great things for you, but it won't work until you pick it up and curl it a few times. The same thing goes for whatever language learning resource you're using or not using. If you put in one hour a day, you get results. 
If you put in 10 minutes a day, you get results. But if you put in zero, you get zero. You can have the best language learning method in the world and get zero results if you do nothing. And similarly, you can have the worst textbook ever and make progress if you put in the time. So you have to make sure you're consistently putting in time first. Part two, getting a return on language learning. Now, if you're putting in time and have a consistent routine, the next step is to track your effort and results. There's a good quote for this. What gets measured gets managed. Meaning, if you track your progress, you can know what works and what doesn't. And you know how to improve. So, let's say your dream is to speak the language. And right now, you're using a quiz app to learn the language. How do you know if it's working? You can waste months doing this until one day you realize you can't speak. Or you can figure this out sooner if you track your effort. If you step back and track your effort and results, you'll see that the quizzes have helped you remember words, but you've done zero speaking practice and can't speak. Once you realize this, you can adjust your routine to do something else that helps you speak. The point is, you get to know what works and what doesn't work. Again, what gets measured gets managed. Next, tracking helps you see a clear path to your language goals. Here's an example from our learning program. With our audio lessons, the absolute beginner level ones, we know that three or four audio lessons can help you master about one minute of conversation. That's because the dialogue tracks are about 20 seconds. So 20 seconds a piece, that's 60 seconds, one minute. Now you know the return on your time. Three or four lessons means one minute of conversation. And because you know how to reach one minute, you know how to reach two minutes, three minutes, and then 10 minutes you can actually see a clear path to your goals. So the big lesson is, if you track your results, you'll know what to expect in the future, and you can hit your language learning goals. Again, what gets measured gets managed. Now, how do you track exactly? Part three, how to track your results and hit your goals. Remember, at the basic level, language learning is putting in time. You don't need a special language gene or a talent. You just need time. The more time you put in, the more results you get. So let's look at two ways, an easy way and an advanced way of tracking your time and results. Let's start with the easy way first. One, simply track the time you put in. So if you do a 10 minute audio lesson today and then spend five minutes with flashcards, note this as 15 minutes for the day. Just write it down in a notebook or a planner. Then do the same thing tomorrow. The goal here is to track the time and your effort so you can review later. If one day you realize you don't speak as much as you'd like, here's what you do. You look at your timesheet. If you see that you've been just watching YouTube videos, you can spot the problem, which is you've done no actual vocab study or speaking practice. And then you can start doing it. Another way you can track your time and effort is with the dashboard on our site. If you visit the dashboard, you can see the lessons you've completed, the number of flashcards reviewed, and hours studied. Now, here's the second tactic, and it's an advanced one. Track time and results. Tracking time is easy, but tracking results is trickier if you're learning a language on your own. So, how do you do that? For example, if you're studying words with flashcards, study for five minutes, and can remember seven out of 10 words, then that's your return. You know that five minutes gives you seven words. If you know this, you'll know what to expect when you learn new words. Another thing you can do is work to boost that number to 10 out of 10. Next, if you're practicing your listening skills, try to gauge how much you understand. If you understood about 20% of a three minute lesson, then that's your return for now. But by knowing this, you can start asking questions like, what can I do to understand 50% of this lesson? Will doubling my time double my results as well? Will reviewing this lesson for a few minutes a day every day work better than trying to memorize it all today? Then you put these questions to the test and try them out. And because you know your return, you can see if it really works. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. The first lesson is how to approach your goals and language learning. So why are we talking about the gym? The gym is a great example because it's filled with people working on their goals and it gives you a snapshot of where most people are with their goals. And everyone there has one goal, to be fit. But not everyone is there yet. You have a few people that look like fitness models. Then you have around 20 or 30 people that have good, respectable physiques, the middle group. And then the rest of the people are still working their way up. It's motivating because everyone has a chance of succeeding. 
If you've been to the gym, you understand the importance of repetition, doing reps. A rep is the number of times you do a certain exercise. Like 15 push-ups is 15 reps of push-ups. So even people still working toward their goals have a chance of succeeding if they put in the reps. If they do a little bit a day over a long period of time, they'll get there. The process is simple. The more you do, the longer you stick with it, the more progress you make. And the same goes for learning language or any other goal in life. It's about putting in the reps a little bit a day, consistently, for a long period of time. If you want to get bigger muscles, you pick up a dumbbell and you do reps. If you want to learn more words, you do the reps. Five new words a day. So, what can you do right now? For example, if you're using our program, just do one lesson a day. If you have a textbook, do one page a day. If you're using an app, put in five minutes a day. Again, everyone has a chance to succeed. They just need to put in the reps and they need to make the time. This is where the second lesson comes in. You'll learn how to find and make time to learn a language. There's a reason the people you see at the gym daily, and especially the people you see at 10 p.m. on a Friday, are the ones with above average results. They're the most consistent. But how do they get that level of consistency? There tend to be three types of people. First, the people that have plenty of free time, so it's a non-issue for them. Second, the busier people. They make time regardless of what their schedule is like meaning they show up at 1 a.m. just to fit in a session, or they cancel other plans to make time. And third, the people who have made it a habit. They're so used to going that they don't have to think about it. Ideally, you want to be in the third group with language learning, but most people fall into the second group. The truth is that to make time, they have to cancel other plans. Some wake up earlier to squeeze in a session in the a.m. Some go late at night. It's the same exact thing with language learning. You make time. The good news with language learning is you don't need to open up a lesson at 1 a.m. and put in an hour. With our learning program, you'll get our quick but powerful three to 15 minute audio and video lessons. And because the lessons are short, you can easily make time. You can do a lesson on your commute or while walking somewhere. Imagine learning a quick conversation while on your way to the store. Finally, the third language learning lesson you'll learn at the gym is why you don't need the best possible routine to get results. Have you ever heard a friend say, I have to start the right way. It has to be perfect. Well, this is a disastrous way to start anything, whether fitness or language learning. And most learners spend a lot of time worrying about starting right, instead of just starting and keeping at it. But the point is, if you start learning from a textbook and stick with it, you'll get results. You'll improve your reading, vocabulary, and grammar. Of course, it won't get you speaking. You'll only get good at what you focus on. But the fact is, you'll still make progress. Same with the gym. If you start off with bicep curls, you'll see progress in time. But at some point, you'll need to add in legs as well. You can't skip leg day. So here's what you can learn. Here's what smart beginners do. They don't look for the best way to start. They just start and keep going. And once they have a consistent routine, they start optimizing. They improve their routine. If you start taking one lesson a day and can easily maintain that routine, then you might eventually realize that you want to practice speaking. You need to shadow that lesson's conversation. So you add shadowing to your routine, and that's how you grow. Same thing with the gym. The smart beginners make sure they do their reps and come in as much as possible. And doing the basics is enough for them to build muscle. Later on, they'll start adjusting their exercises and adding new ones. But you'll never get to that point if you overthink yourself into inaction and don't build that habit. So as long as you start and continue, most starting routines and learning methods are good enough. You don't need the best possible one right now. You could have the best possible language learning program, but if you don't use it consistently, it's useless. All right, so today you learned, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. If you're like most language learners, then your number one goal is to speak more, right? You want to have fluent conversations with natives. It's a great goal to have. But for most language learners, speaking also happens to be their weakest skill. You may not know enough of the language to express yourself. You tend to run out of words and things to say, and you're just not sure how to start conversation. If you have at least one of these issues, then talking points are just what you need. 
Part one, what's a talking point? A talking point is a topic that invites discussion or argument. In other words, just something to talk about. It could be about yourself, your work, your hobbies, the weather, food, or what you did this past weekend. All of these are talking points. Here's an example to help you better understand talking points. Think of a conversation you'd have with a friend. You can ask, what did you do this weekend? They'll reply and then ask you back. The talking point here is the weekend. Let's say your friend says they went to a restaurant. That's a natural talking point to explore next. You can ask, what kind of restaurants do you like? Now you've covered two talking points. The more talking points you have, the more you can speak. And the same goes for your target language. The only challenge is you need to know the relevant words and phrases for that topic. For example, if you want to talk about the weekend, you need to know phrases and questions like, what did you do this weekend? I did this. What about you? In the next part, you'll discover five easy talking points that you can master with our learning program. Let's get into part two. Part two, five talking points you can use. The first one is learn how to introduce yourself in your target language. Why is this a powerful talking point? Introducing yourself is something you'll do again and again, every time you meet someone new. So learning the relevant phrases is a must. If you've done the first few lessons on our site, you can already do this. If not, then check out our absolute beginner lessons and the top 25 questions you must know lessons. You'll learn basic conversations with our quick three to 15 minute lessons. We'll give you the exact lines to use along with the translations so that you can use them in conversations. You can also use this talking point to continue a conversation. For example, if you've started with a different point like the weather, then it makes sense to say, by the way, my name is. Talking point number two, the weather. This is a universal talking point. People like to talk or complain about the weather all over the world. In fact, just saying it's really nice today is enough to start a conversation with a native speaker. If you want to talk about the weather, check out our can-do lesson pathway called Can Talk About Weather. You'll find this pathway in the absolute beginner level of our lesson library. Talking point number three, compliments. Compliments are another great way to start a conversation or continue one. If you're running out of things to say, you can quickly transition and say something about their city, their country, or just, hey, I like your shirt. If you want to learn how to compliment, check out our compliments phrase list. This list is free to access for all users. If you don't know where to find it on our site, leave a comment in the comments below and we'll follow up. Point number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions or about the price and let the conversation go from there. These are very basic phrases that you learn in our survival phrases lessons. If you want to strike up a quick dialogue, this is a great talking point to use. Point number five, learn phrases for transactions, like getting a room at a hotel, shopping, ordering food, or telling the taxi driver where to go. You may think that this isn't much of a talking point, but for the learners that are shy about talking to random native speakers for no reason, this is an easy way to start a dialogue. You have a good excuse. You wanna buy something so the staff will be happy to respond. Again, you learn all of these with our survival phrases lessons. Okay, let's move on to our last part. Part three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets. Lastly, I'm going to tell you how to get our collection of conversation cheat sheets for free. With these cheat sheets, you'll be able to talk about all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, dating, family, weather, and much more, which means you can master a lot of talking points and speak more of your target language. If you'd like to get these cheat sheets, please leave us a comment in the comment section. Four rules for staying motivated with language learning. Want to know how to really stay motivated? Then listen closely to these four rules. These rules might be a little different from the advice that you often hear. Ready? Rule number one, action comes first. Are you the type of person who prefers to make things happen? Or are you the type that waits for things to happen to you? One of the best ways to stay motivated with language learning is to not think about motivation. Instead, take action and start learning. The mistake that most people make is that they have this backwards. They think they should wait to feel motivated first and then start learning. But really, it's the other way around. First, you do a language lesson. You learn a basic conversation. Then you do another. And then you start feeling like you can do more and learn more. You see results. So results bring motivation. Thinking about motivation does not bring motivation. 
Thinking about motivation is like reading an article about how to go outside for a run instead of actually going outside for a run. So action comes first. Rule number two, always have an outside influence. It's very easy to lose motivation if you're learning language alone. So what do you do? Here are some examples. You get a study buddy. You hire a tutor. You join a meetup group. You plan a trip to a country where people speak that language. Or you sign up for a proficiency test, like many language learners do. Why do this? Because now you have other people depending on you. You have outside factors that keep you going with the language. For example, if you signed up for a language proficiency test, you know you have a few months to study and you have to take the test on a certain date. Someone is going to pass or fail you. This is a lot more motivating than learning alone. If you're learning with our program, you can get your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll hold you accountable, send you homework, and give you feedback. If you have a study buddy, well, now you have someone that expects you to show up and improve. And if they're better than you, that should give you extra motivation because you want to be at their level. So get some outside influence. The next rule is rule number three. Always have a go-to study method. When you arrive at work or the gym or when you start your homework, you always have that one thing you do first, right? What do you do? For example, with work, maybe the very first thing you do is check emails. Then you check your tasks for the week. After that, you get started. Well, you need to make the same kind of habits with language learning. You need a go-to study method that you're comfortable with, an easy starting point. And this totally depends on you and your style. Choose something you enjoy. Some people listen to audio lessons. Some people like flashcards. For some people, writing is easy. You can write out song lyrics and translate them. It's up to you. The point is you should give yourself an easy first step to get you started and get into the flow of learning. If you're learning with our program, you can start with the word of the day email or do a quick three minute audio lesson. You can copy out the lesson dialogue, read through the lesson notes, or even easier, just review and re-listen to a lesson you took the day before. If you have your own go-to study method, you're already miles ahead of most learners. Leave a comment and tell us about it. And finally, rule number four, always be working on something. So here, I want you to stop and think about your friends. Do you have a friend that's always up to something? Some project? They're working on a song or they're making videos. They finish one thing and they start another. Well, if you wonder how they stay motivated, it's because they're always working on something. And this goes back to taking action. If you're not learning or working, you can't stay motivated. So you need to apply this to language learning. How? For example, like I mentioned in part two about outside influence, you can make a plan to travel to a country that speaks your target language, or you can sign up for a language proficiency test. If you do that, you'll have something to look forward to, something to do. If you're traveling, you need to learn travel phrases. If you have a proficiency test coming up, you have to study grammar and do exercises. What else can you do? If you already have a textbook or workbook, make it a goal to finish that book. If you have a learning program, make it a goal to finish it or reach a certain level. If you're using our lessons, make it a goal to finish one learning pathway. Then when you're done, give yourself something else to do, something to stick with, something to look forward to. So let's recap. One, action comes first. Two, always have an outside influence. Three, always have a go-to study method. And four, always be working on something. How to double your speaking time in your target language. Okay, let's get into part one. Why is real speaking progress so hard to make? Let's say you've studied the language for a few months, and now you finally have a chance to practice speaking. Maybe you have a tutor or a native speaker friend who is willing to practice with you. You start talking and your friend helps you improve bits and pieces of your speaking, like pronunciation and grammar. And maybe you can talk about your day and common topics. But without proper preparation on both sides, the person learning and the person teaching, that's it. You're limited to what you can talk about. You don't know enough of the language to keep going and they aren't prepared to help you speak more of the language. So if you try to have an open-ended conversation, you'll fall flat at some point. You'll run out of things to say and talk about. You'll run out of words and topics. And this is true outside of language learning. It's easy for conversations to die when you run out of things to talk about. 
A freestyle approach to conversation is nice for advanced learners or people who do serious preparation, but it's not so great for beginners. This is one reason it's hard to make real progress with speaking. You run out of things to say. But there is a way to double your speaking time, even if you're an absolute beginner, even if you're low on words and grammar. And that's by adding structure that you'll find in our lessons. Let's get into that. Part two, how you can double your speaking time with our audio and video lessons. Let's say you're having a practice conversation with that same friend, except this time, both of you have a list of topics to follow. Then your conversations won't die out as quickly. The point is, if you have a structure to follow, like a lesson, there's always something for you to fall back on. And if you're already using our audio and video lessons, you get just that. So here's how you can use our lessons to double your speaking time. One, make sure to listen to and review your current audio or video lessons. Why? Each lesson conversation is based on a certain topic, like talking about the weather, talking about family, ordering food, and so on. So by simply taking a lesson, you learn a conversation around a certain topic. Lessons will give you a lot of topics to talk about, along with the relevant grammar and vocabulary, which many beginners might not have. Think about it. If you wanted to talk about a vacation, you'd need to know words like vacation, cruise, and holiday in your target language. You'd also need the right grammar points to help you express ideas. Our audio and video lessons will provide you with all of these, so listen to the lessons and prepare ahead of time. Two, use the dialogue presented in the lesson. In other words, you can memorize the lines from the lesson dialogue. You're already learning conversations in the lessons, so you may as well use them for yourself. And doing this will help prepare you for future conversations. Think about it. We often use lines like, where are you from? What's your name? My name is, how was your weekend? I went out last weekend. Once you memorize these expressions, you can and will use them over and over. As an example, imagine you do a few lessons about the weather you'll master a few conversations about it. The next time that topic pops up in real life, you'll be able to talk about it. And three, each lesson comes with cultural insights. What does that mean for you? It gives you more things to talk about with a native speaker. So if you bring up a cultural point in a conversation with a native speaker, you'll likely get a good reaction and extend the conversation because you're talking about what they know best, their culture. So today you learned one, why it's hard for many learners to make progress with their speaking skills. It's because we tend to run out of things to say. And two, how you can double your speaking time. Accomplish this by taking our lessons, memorizing the dialogues, and using the cultural insights. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anajiunga na klabu ya michezo na kupata maelezo kuhusu sera zake. Ni aina gani ya wanachama atakayochagua? Wacha nianze kwa kueleza aina tofauti ya wanachama wa klabu yetu ilivyofafanuliwa katika kiji karatasi hii. Wanachama wa kawaida wanaweza kutumia pumziko na bwawa la kuogelea wakati wowote katika siku yoyote ya wiki. Lakini pia tunapeana wanachama wa asubuhi mapema ambapo watu wanaweza kutumia vifaa asubuhi peke yake na wanachama wa usiku kwa wale wanaotaka kuja usiku pekee Masaa ya wanachama wa asubuhi mapema ni saa yapi Wanachama wa asubuhi mapema wanaweza tumia vifaa kuanzia saa 12 asubuhi hadi saa 4 asubuhi na wanachama wa usiku wanaweza kuzitumia kuanzia saa 12 jioni hadi saa 5 usiku Naelewa kwa hivyo wanachama wa asubuhi wanaweza simama hapa na kutumia vifaa hivi wakielekea kazini. Ndivyo. Wanachama wa asubuhi unasifika sana kwa watu wanaofanya kazi kuanzia saa 3 asubuhi hadi saa 11 jioni. Ningelipenda kutumia pumziko na 
bwawa la kuogelea nadhani nitatumia pumziko katika masaya asubuhi kabla ya kwenda kazini katika masiku ya kawaida na nitumie bwawa la kuogelea wikendi Je, una chama unaokubali masaya asubuhi katika siku ya kawaida lakini siku nzima ya wikendi? Samahani bwana, lakini hatupeani wanachama kama huo. Sawa, sidhani nitaweza kuamka mapema katika wikendi. Kwa hivyo, nitachukua wanachama huu. Ni aina gani ya wanachama atakayochagua? Mwanamume anajiunga na klabu ya michezo na kupata maelezo kuhusu sera zake. Ni aina gani ya wanachama atakayochagua? Wacha nianze kwa kueleza aina tofauti ya wanachama wa klabu yetu ilivyofafanuliwa katika kiji karatasi hii. Wanachama wa kawaida wanaweza kutumia pumziko na bwawa la kuogelea wakati wowote katika siku yoyote ya wiki. Lakini pia tunapeana wanachama wa asubuhi mapema ambapo watu wanaweza kutumia vifaa asubuhi peke yake na wanachama wa usiku kwa wale wanaotaka kuja usiku pekee. Masaa ya wanachama wa asubuhi mapema ni saa yapi? Wanachama wa asubuhi mapema wanaweza tumia vifaa kuanzia saa 12 asubuhi hadi saa 4 asubuhi na wanachama wa usiku wanaweza kuzitumia kuanzia saa 12 jioni hadi saa 5 usiku. Naelewa kwa hivyo wanachama wa asubuhi wanaweza simama hapa na kutumia vifaa hivi wakielekea kazini. Ndivyo. Wanachama wa asubuhi unasifika sana kwa watu wanaofanya kazi kuanzia saa 3 asubuhi hadi saa moja jioni. Ningelipenda kutumia pumziko na bwawa la kuogelea. Nadhani nitatumia pumziko katika masaya asubuhi kabla ya kwenda kazini katika masiku ya kawaida na nitumie bwawa la kuogelea wikendi. Je, una chama unaokubali masaya asubuhi katika siku ya kawaida lakini siku nzima ya wikendi? Samahani bwana, lakini hatupeani wanachama kama huo. Sawa. Sidhani nitaweza kuamka mapema katika wikendi. Kwa hivyo, nitachukua wanachama huu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni watu wangapi kwa jumla wanakuja kwa karamu? Karamu itafanyika kesho. Nani anakuja kwa karamu? Sisi wawili, marafiki zangu wawili na mwalimu. Kwa jumla tutakuwa watano. Oh, mwalimu anakuja na mke wake. Sawa. Ni watu wangapi kwa jumla wanakuja kwa karamu? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni watu wangapi kwa jumla wanakuja kwa karamu? Karamu itafanyika kesho. Nani anakuja kwa karamu? Sisi wawili, marafiki zangu wawili na mwalimu. Kwa jumla tutakuwa watano. Oh, mwalimu anakuja na mke wake. Sawa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anaongea na mtengenezaji nywele wake. Angelipenda kutengeneza nywele yake vipi? 
Hello. Naweza kukusaidia? Hello. Nina hifadhi ya birichie saa tisa ya mchana. Karibu birichi. Njoo huku. Naweza kukusaidia vipi leo? Ningelipenda kubadilisha mtindo wa nywele yangu kidogo. Sawa, ungependa urefu gani? Urefu wa hadi kwenye bega. Sawa. Je, na nywele ya mbele ya uso? Ziwache. Wima chini au uwe na nafasi katika upande? Sehemu ya upande kidogo. Pande ipi? Pengine kushoto kidogo kutoka katikati. Naelewa. Tutaanza na shampu, hivyo basi njoo huku. Angelipenda kutengeneza nywele yake vipi? Mwanamke anaongea na mtengenezaji nywele wake. Angelipenda kutengeneza nywele yake vipi? Hello. Naweza kukusaidia? Hello. Nina hifadhi ya birichie saa tisa ya mchana. Karibu birichi. Njoo huku. Naweza kukusaidia vipi leo? Ningelipenda kubadilisha mtindo wa nywele yangu kidogo. Sawa, ungependa urefu gani? Urefu wa hadi kwenye bega. Sawa. Je, na nywele ya mbele ya uso? Ziwache. Wima chini au uwe na nafasi katika upande? Sehemu ya upande kidogo. Pande ipi? Pengine kushoto kidogo kutoka katikati. Naelewa. Tutaanza na shampu, hivyo basi njoo huku. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Learning a language requires a huge investment of time and often money as well. Many people are hesitant to put in the amount of effort required to become fluent. But learning a new language can be one of life's most rewarding experiences. Here are five reasons to learn a language. Number one, more opportunities. A new language can open up many new doors. You're able to work in countries other than your own. Tons of employers look to hire multilingual professionals every year. Number two, meeting new people. Get to know speakers of other languages on a more personal level. Meeting new people is one of the main reasons people begin to study a language. Making new friends is a good enough reason to start studying. Number three, exploring a different culture. Whether you decide to live abroad or you're just taking a vacation, knowing the local language will allow you to better understand the people. This can open your eyes to not only their country, but your country as well. Learn how people view your home from their perspective. Number four, health benefits. Studying a new language actually comes with health benefits. Keep your brain sharp by studying every day. You'll be helping your mind fight off old age and stay fresh. Number five, discover you can do it. We've heard every excuse that people give for failing to learn a new language. Too old, not enough time, wrong genes. But you shouldn't let your excuses hold you back. You really can learn another language. You could even hold your first conversation just a few days from now. Don't make any more excuses. Just click to start speaking the language you've always wanted to learn. Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required. And you'll get the best free online resources. Stop hesitating and start learning a new language now. Hello everyone, it's Medina here. Today we're going to talk about 10 ways to save the planet in Swahili. Welcome and enjoy. Kujitolea. Kujitolea. To volunteer. Kujitolea. Kujitolea. To volunteer. Napenda kujitolea. Kusafisha mita. I like to volunteer cleaning the streets. Yeah. I volunteered in Tohoku in 2011 uh, after the tsunami earthquake, and I know it was a it was an intense experience. Kinga, Kinga, 
to protect. Kinga, to protect. Kukinga misitu ni jambo la maana. Kukinga misitu ni jambo la maana. Protecting forest is a very important thing. Let us protect our forest for the best of our future. Kutumia tena. Kutumia tena. To reuse. Kutumia tena. To reuse. Kutumia tena kitu chochote ni pendekezo nzuri. Kutumia tena kitu chochote ni pendekezo nzuri. Reusing anything is a very good recommendation. Kuhifadhi. Kuhifadhi. To conserve. Kuhifadhi. To conserve. Najua kuhifadhi mazingira. I know how to conserve the environment. Yes, probably I may not be really perfect, but I try to throw the garbage on the right day and in the right places. Do you? Let's conserve our environment and make it clean. Punguza uchafu. Punguza uchafu. To reduce trash. Punguza uchafu. To reduce trash. Mikakati ya kupunguza uchafu ni mingi. Mikakati ya kupunguza uchafu ni mingi. There are many strategies to reduce trash. Very many. One of them is to recycle. In fact, that makes work easier for you. If you don't know how to recycle your clothes, get those recycle shops and just go. Take them there. They'll make work easier for you. Kutunza mazingira. Kutunza mazingira. To care for the environment. Kutunza mazingira. To care for the environment. Matendo yako yanafa kuwa ya kutunza mazingira. Matendo yako yanafa kuwa ya kutunza mazingira. Your actions should be to take care of the environment. In whatever you do, just try and think of your environment. Wherever you go, whenever you walk, Watch out. Kutumia bidhaa za kutunza mazingira. Kutumia bidhaa za kutunza mazingira. To use eco-friendly products. Kutumia bidhaa za kutunza mazingira. To use eco-friendly products. Ni vyema kutumia bidhaa vya kutunza mazingira. Ni vyema kutumia bidhaa za kutunza mazingira. It is good to use eco-friendly products. Be careful how you throw those plastic bags because they eventually spoil the environment. They spoil the soil. Hifadhi maji. Hifadhi maji. To save water. Hifadhi maji. To save water. Hifadhi maji. Hifadhi uhai. To save water is to save life. It's true. Reality. You leave water running, then when it gets lost, you start wondering, and where do I get water? Water is life. Preserve it. Don't let that tap running. Hifadhi umeme. Hifadhi umeme. To save energy. Hifadhi umeme. To save energy. Hifadhi umeme. Ili uweze kuhifadhi hela. Hifadhi umeme. Ili uweze kuhifadhi hela. Save energy so that you can save money. Money is good, but you got to keep it only if you save energy. Kausha nguo na jua. Kausha nguo na jua. To dry clothes with sunshine. Kukausha nguo na jua. To dry clothes with sunshine. Kukausha nguo na jua. Kuna hifadhi nguvu za umeme. Kukausha nguo na jua. Kuna ifadhi nguvu za umeme. Drying clothes with sunshine saves power. So let's do it. Try and avoid using those drying machines and get yourself out there to dry your clothes. It's easy and it saves you more money. Thank you so much for watching. I guess we've learned something on how to conserve the environment. Please tell us how you conserve the environment. And if possible, check out our website, swahilipod101.com for more lessons. See you again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mtu yuko katika duka la hamburger. Ataagiza seti gani? Samahani. Naweza kupewa seti speciali ya burger. Ndio. Tafadhali chagua kati ya chenga chenga au salada. Salada tafadhali. Sawa. Tafadhali chagua kinywaji. Coca-Cola tafadhali. Ataagiza seti gani? Mtu yuko katika duka la hamburger. Ataagiza seti gani? Samahani. Naweza kupewa seti speciali ya burger. Ndio. Tafadhali chagua kati ya chenga chenga au salada. Salada tafadhali. Sawa. Tafadhali chagua kinywaji. Coca-Cola tafadhali. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In this lesson, you will learn new vocabulary to increase your language skills. After learning the new words, you will be challenged with a quiz to review them. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. One shilling. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Five shillings. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Ten shillings. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Twenty shillings. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. 50 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi miyamoja. Noti ya shilingi miyamoja. 100 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi miyamoja. Noti ya shilingi miyamoja. Noti ya shilingi miyamoja. Noti ya shilingi miyambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. 200 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miatano. 500 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. 
noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. One thousand shillings note. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. 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 Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anaongea na mfanyikazi wa duka. Atanunua kompyuta gani? Samahani. Natafuta kompyuta nyepesi sana. Sawa. Unaonaje hii? Ni nyembamba sana na nyepesi. Inaonekana nzuri. Unaweza kutazama DVD katika kompyuta hii? Ninahofia hauwezi. Unaweza ona DVD kwa ile pale. Lakini ni kubwa kidogo na nzito. Hmm. Kweli hii ni nzito sana. Nitanunua ile ya kwanza. Asante sana. Unaweza chagua nyeupe, nyeusi au ya fedha. Nataka nyeusi. Atanunua kompyuta gani? Mwanamke anaongea na mfanyikazi wa duka. Atanunua kompyuta gani? Samahani. Natafuta kompyuta nyepesi sana. Sawa. Unaonaje hii? 
ni nyembamba sana na nyepesi. Inaonekana nzuri. Unaweza kutazama DVD katika kompyuta hii. Nina hofia hauwezi. Unaweza ona DVD kwa ile pale. Lakini ni kubwa kidogo na nzito. Hmm. Kweli hii ni nzito sana. Nitanunua ile ya kwanza. Asante sana. Unaweza chagua nyeupe, nyeusi au ya fedha. Nataka nyeusi. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwalimu anapika keki. Je, mwalimu alieka nini ndani yake? Leo, tunaenda kutengeneza keki. Kwanza, changanya siagi na sukari. Kisha, ongeza ya mbili na changanya vizuri. Ongeza unga, kisha uchanganye pole pole. Weka kwenye oveni na uoke kwa dakika hamsini. Ndivyo hivyo. Je, mwalimu alieka nini ndani yake? Mwalimu anapika keki. Je, mwalimu alieka nini ndani yake? Leo, tunaenda kutengeneza keki. Kwanza, changanya siagi na sukari. Kisha, ongeza ya mbili na changanya vizuri. Ongeza unga kisha uchanganye pole pole. Weka kwenye oveni na uoke kwa dakika hamsini. Ndivyo hivyo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. It's Medina again. Welcome to this series. Today we're going to look at 10 things to do in the summer in Kenya. It's going to be fun. And I'm sure this might help you get yourself in Kenya during the summer season. Okay, let's enjoy and have fun. Enda ulaya. Enda ulaya. To travel abroad. Enda ulaya. To travel abroad. Naenda ulaya kesho. I'm traveling abroad tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow should come. Sure enough, I'm going to Canada tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm going abroad. Kupumzika katika bichi. Kupumzika katika bichi. To relax at the beach. Kupumzika katika bichi. To relax at the beach. Relax. Feeling good at the beach. Napenda kupumzika katika bichi. Napenda kupumzika katika bichi. I like to relax at the beach. I like to relax at the beach. Really, it's so fun and and summer is coming and the, the beach is right close to my home. So I'm going to have fun. Relax. Jifunze Swahili na SwahiliPod101.com Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com To learn Swahili with SwahiliPod101.com Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com To learn Swahili with SwahiliPod101.com Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com msimu huu. Jifunze Kiswahili na SwahiliPod101.com msimu huu. Learn Swahili with SwahiliPod101.com this season. Yes, we are having exciting lessons and we'll love to have you learn Swahili with us so that when you go to Kenya or you go to some of those East African countries in Africa, you can speak Swahili with them. It will be amazing and you'll get along with those people. You'll enjoy your time there. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn to cook Kenyan food. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn how to cook Kenyan food. Kujifunza kupika chakula cha Kenya. To learn how to cook Kenyan food. Jifunze kupika chakula cha Kenya. 
jifunze kupika chakula cha Kenya. Learn to cook Kenyan food. Learn to cook Kenyan food, especially ugali. Try it out. It's quite simple. You get flour, boiled water, you keep adding little by little and stirring until it's a little bit hard. Something like rice. Then eat it with vegetables or stew. I bet you'll like it. Kuanda nyama choma. Kuanda nyama choma. To have a barbecue. Kuanda nyama choma. Kuanda nyama choma. To have a barbecue. Nifunze kuanda nyama choma. Nifunze kuanda nyama choma. Teach me how to have a barbecue. Try it out especially nyama ya mbuzi. Nyama ya mbuzi means goat meat. It's one of the most delicious one. You may go further and try the crocodile meat. Trying things out, you never know what you like. Kusherehekea usiku wote. Kusherehekea usiku wote. To party all night. Kusherehekea usiku wote. To party all night. Tutasherehekea usiku wote. We will party all night. Yeah, let's go. It's tonight. Are you coming? Tembea kwa muda mrefu. Tembea kwa muda mrefu. To go hiking. Tembea kwa muda mrefu. To go hiking. Weekend ijayo tutatembea kwa muda mrefu. Weekend ijayo tutatembea kwa muda mrefu. We will go hiking this coming weekend. We will go hiking this coming weekend. Come prepared with all the gadgets ready. Fanya kazi ya ziada. Fanya kazi ya ziada. To work a part-time job. Fanya kazi ya ziada. To work a part-time job. Mama yangu alifanya kazi ya ziada. Mama yangu alifanya kazi ya ziada. My mother worked a part-time job. And I remember those days. She'll not even stay at home. She'll go and search for a living just because of us. And whenever I remember that, I work so hard so that I can help her. She's at home. She's retired. She's relaxing because we are working for her. She worked for us in turn. Kufurahia na marafiki. Kufurahia na marafiki. To have fun with friends. Kufurahia na marafiki. To have fun with friends. Kufurahia na marafiki ni jambo wa Kenya wanapenda. Kufurahia na marafiki ni jambo wa Kenya wanapenda. We like doing it. Having fun with friends, I mean, having fun with friends is something Kenyans love. We love it so much. We love hanging out, going to the beach, going, partying, you know, just getting that Close a bond with people you love. I don't know about you, but you know, when you come to Kenya, you'll know that. You'll realize that we love people and we'll get you bonding with us. Kukan dani na kuvinjari mtandao. Kukan dani na kuvinjari mtandao. To stay inside and browse the internet. Kukan dani na kuvinjari mtandao. To stay inside and browse the internet. You stay inside and browse the internet. Watu wengi hupenda kukanda ni na kuvinjari mtandao. Watu wengi hupenda kukanda ni na kuvinjari mtandao. Some people like to stay indoors and browse the internet. Are you one of them? I guess I am a victim, but I'm trying to get myself out there and enjoy nature instead. You can think about it. Thank you so much again. I love to take you through this lesson. 10 things to do in the summer while you're in Kenya. Did you like it? I know you can get a practical experience by going to Kenya. I bet you're going to love it. Join us again in the next lesson. But before that, we would like to hear your comments. And if possible, subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to check our website, SwahiliPod101.com for more lessons. Thank you and see you later. Bye-bye. We will party all night.
How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu kujiandaa kwa utuba watakayokuwa nayo kesho katika ofisi yao. Baada ya maongezi haya, mwanamke atachunguza nini? Sawa. Nadhani tuko karibu tayari kufanya hotuba kesho. Vitu chache tu vya kuzingatia. Mkutano utaanza saa tatu kamili. Kwa hivyo, waweza kukagua chumba cha mkutano tena leo. Vyema. Nimekagua chumba hicho. Vizuri sana. Je, ulihakikisha kuwa projekta inafanya kazi vizuri? Oh. Nilitarajia kukagua projekta kesho asubuhi nikiwa na kompyuta yangu. La, ni lazima tukalikague leo. Hatutakuwa na nafasi ya kurekebisha ikiwa itakuwa na shida. Kwa hivyo, hakikisha umelikagua leo. Hilo ndilo jambo muhimu sana. Sawa. Nitafanya. Na ulishachapisha nakala kadhaa? Bitanaka anazichapisha sasa hivi. Na tutazame nini tena? Oh, ulikagua ubao? Ndivyo, nilikagua. Wakati mwingine, kalamu hazina wino wa kutosha kuandika. Ulipata nafasi ya kuzikagua? Bado, lakini nitahakikisha nimefanya hivyo baadaye. Vyema. Tafadhali hakikisha umefanya hivyo leo. Baada ya maongezi haya, mwanamke atachunguza nini? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu kujiandaa kwa utuba watakayokuwa nayo kesho katika ofisi yao. Baada ya maongezi haya, mwanamke atachunguza nini? Sawa. Nadhani tuko karibu tayari kufanya hotuba kesho. Vitu chache tu vya kuzingatia. Mkutano utaanza saa tatu kamili. Kwa hivyo, waweza kukagua chumba cha mkutano tena leo? Vyema. Nimekagua chumba hicho. Vizuri sana. Je, ulihakikisha kuwa projekta inafanya kazi vizuri? Oh, nilitarajia kukagua projekta kesho asubuhi nikiwa na kompyuta yangu. La, ni lazima tukalikague leo. Hatutakuwa na nafasi ya kurekebisha ikiwa itakuwa na shida. Kwa hivyo, hakikisha umelikagua leo. Hilo ndilo jambo muhimu sana. Sawa. Nitafanya. Na ulishachapisha nakala kadhaa? Bitanaka anazichapisha sasa hivi. Na tutazame nini tena? Oh, ulikagua ubao? Ndivyo, nilikagua. Wakati mwingine, kalamu hazina wino wa kutosha kuandika. Ulipata nafasi ya kuzikagua? Bado, lakini nitahakikisha nimefanya hivyo baadaye. Vyema. Tafadhali hakikisha umefanya hivyo leo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu mtindo wa kadi ya kampuni ya biashara. Waliamua mtindo upi? Tuna mitindo mipya ya kadi ya biashara ya kampuni. Unadhania gani ni bora? Na tuone. Nadhani ni vyema jina la kampuni liwe kubwa. Hivyo basi inapaswa iwe hii. Sawa sawa. Napenda hii kwa vile jina la kampuni ni kubwa na liko juu. Moja ya hizi ina nafasi ya picha. Unaionaje? Hmm. Nadhani linafanya maandishi yawe madogo. Ndivyo. Maandishi yanaweza kuwa ngumu kusoma kukiwa na picha. Vyema. 
basi na tuendelee na hiari ya kwanza. Waliamua mtindo upi? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu mtindo wa kadi ya kampuni ya biashara. Waliamua mtindo upi? Tuna mitindo mipya ya kadi ya biashara ya kampuni. Unadhania gani ni bora? Na tuone. Nadhani ni vyema jina la kampuni liwe kubwa. Hivyo basi inapaswa iwe hii. Sawa sawa. Napenda hii kwa vile jina la kampuni ni kubwa na liko juu. Moja ya hizi ina nafasi ya picha. Unaionaje? Hmm. Nadhani linafanya maandishi yawe madogo. Ndivyo. Maandishi yanaweza kuwa ngumu kusoma kukiwa na picha. Vyema. Basi na tuendelee na hiari ya kwanza. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody. My name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you have learned the new words and phrases, stick around, review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own fresh deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is Mbwa Dog Mbwa Mbwa Dog Mbwa aliyechaka anakimbilia mpira. The shaggy dog is running after a ball. Mbwa aliyechaka anakimbilia mpira. Paka Cat Paka Paka Cat Paka wangu anapenda kulala mchana. My cat likes to take a nap in the afternoon. Paka wangu anapenda kulala mchana. Buku hamster. Buku Buku hamster. Buku hupenda kulala mchana. Hamsters like to sleep during the day. Buku hupenda kulala mchana. Joto warm. Joto Joto warm. Kuna joto hapa ndani. It's very warm in here. Kuna joto hapa ndani. Mvua Lane. Mvua. Mvua. Rain. Mvua lilianza kwa ghafla. The rain started suddenly. Mvua lilianza kwa ghafla. Nyanya. Tomato. Nyanya. Nyanya. Tomato. Kama utaenda sokoni, nilete nyanya. If you go to the market, bring me some tomatoes. Kama utaenda sokoni, nilete e nyanya. Fu. Strawberry. Fu. Fu. U. Strawberry. Unaweza kununua fu wakati wawote kwa mwaka. Lakini zinaraza nzuri wakati wa kiangazi. 
You can buy strawberries all year round, but they taste best in summer. Unaweza kununua fuu wakati wawote kwa mwaka, lakini zinaradha nzuri wakati wa kiangazi. Cherry, 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 cherry. Nataka kula cherry. I want to eat cherries. Nataka kula cherry. Ntoto, child. Ntoto, ntoto, child. He inausu mtoto wako. This concerns your child. He inausu mtoto wako. Rafiki, friend. Rafiki, Rafiki, friend. Rafiki zako walikuja saa moja. Your friends came at seven o'clock. Rafiki zako walikuja saa moja. Mtumzima, adult. Mtumzima, mtu, mzima, adult. Usilie, wewe ni mtu mzima. Don't cry, you're an adult. Usilie, wewe ni mtu mzima. Bicycle, bicycle. Bicycle, bicycle. Bicycle. Ali, je, una bicycle? Ali, do you have a bicycle? Ali, je, una bicycle? Gari, ka. Gari, gari, ka. Alichagua gali la blue. He chose a blue car. Alichagua gali la blue. Piki piki. Motorcycle. Piki piki. Piki piki. Motorcycle. Usalama wa mwimbaji ulikuwa na msurulu wa magali kumi na piki piki sita. The single security detail consisted of a motorcade of ten cars and six motorcycles. Usalama wa mwimbaji ulikuwa na msurulu wa magali kumi Na piki piki sita. Piki piki ya scooter. Scooter. Piki piki ya scooter. Piki piki ya scooter. Scooter. Piki piki za scooter zinatumika kwa uraisi mtani. Scooters are convenient in the city. Piki piki za skuta zinatumika kwa urahisi mtaani. Boti. Boat. Boti. Boti. Boat. Aliliacha boti lake kwenye pwani. He left his boat at the shore. Aliliacha boti lake Kwenye pwani. Yavu yavu. Jellyfish. Yavu yavu. Yavu yavu. Jellyfish. Yavu yavu anaogelea kwenye maji. The jellyfish are bobbing in the water. Yavu yavu anaogelea kwenye maji. Kambakoche. Lobster. Kamba koche. Kamba koche. Lobster. Kamba koche ako juu ya jiwe. The lobster is on the lock. Kamba koche ako juu ya jiwe. Kururu. Crab. Kururu. Kururu. Crab. Kururu awili. Wanatembea kwenye jiwe. 
the two crabs are walking on a rock. Kururu wawili wanatembea kwenye jiwe. Kobe, turtle. Kobe, kobe, turtle. Kobe wa bahari anaogelea kwenye bahari. The sea turtle is swimming in the sea. Kobe wa bahari anaogelea kwenye bahari. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you have learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is shati, shirt, shati. Sha T shirt. He shati mpia ulioninunulia linanifanya nijikune. This new shirt you bought me makes me itchy. He shati mpia ulioninunulia linanifanya nijikune. Suruali pants. Suruali suruali pants. Vuta suluali yako juu. Pull your pants up. Vuta suluali yako juu. Nguo. Dress. Nguo. Nguo. Dress. Najuta sikununua hii nguo. I regret not buying that dress. Najuta Sikununua hiyo nguo. Kusema. Say. Kusema. Kusema. Say. Nilikuwa tu naenda kusema hilo. I was just going to say that. Nilikuwa tu naenda kusema hilo. Kupiga simu. Call. Kupiga simu. Kupiga simu. Call. Mimi nitakupigia sim. I will call you. Mimi nitakupigia simu. Pata. Find. Pata. Pata. Find. Je, yeah, unaweza kutusaidia kupata viti vietu? Can you help us find our seats? Je, yeah, unaweza kutusaidia kupata viti vietu? Safi, clean. Safi, safi, clean. Nchi hii ni safi sana. This country is very clean. Nchi hii ni safi sana. Chafu. Dati. Chafu. Chafu. Dati. Pahala pa chafu hapa pendezi. A dirty place is not present. 
pahali pa chafu hapa pendezi karoti carrot karoti karoti carrot karoti ni bola kwa kutibu marazi ya macho carrot is good for treating eye diseases karoti ni bora kwa kutibu marazi ya macho kitungu onion kitungu kitungu onion mvuka ya kitungu ni chungu sana kwa macho the onion sap is irritating to the eye mvuke wa kitungu ni chungu sana kwa macho Lettuce. 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 Salad yangu iko na lettuce na nyanya pekee. My salad only has lettuce and tomato. Salad yangu iko na lettuce na nyanya pekee. Kondo. Ship. Kondo. Kondo o ship Kondo anakula nyasi kijani kibichi The ship is eating the green glass Kondo o anakula nyasi kijani kibichi Sungura rabbit Sungura Sungura rabbit Sungula wako kipenzi ni mrembo sana. Your pet rabbit is very cute. Sungula wako kipenzi ni mrembo sana. Silly. Sil. Silly. Silly. Sil. Silly anazungusha kitanzi mviringo. The seal is spinning hula hoops. Sili anazungusha kitanzi mviringo. Wingu, cloud. Wingu, wingu, cloud. Hali ya anga leo ni jua na mawingu hapa na pale. Today's weather is sunny with occasional clouds. Hali ya hanga leo ni jua na mawingu hapa na pale. Jua. Sani. Jua. Jua. Sani. Wakati mwingi mimi huenda mandalini wakati wa jua. I often go on a picnic on a sunny day. Wakati mwingi Mimi huenda mandarini wakati wajua. Mvua. Laini. Mvua. Mvua. Laini. Leo ni siku ya kuwa na mvua. Today is a laini day. Leo ni siku ya kuwa na mvua. Mtoto. Baby, mtoto, mtoto, baby, mtoto ameamuka sahii na analia. The babe has just woken up and he is crying. Mtoto ameamuka sahii na analia. Msichana, girl, msichana. Msichana, girl. Msichana huyu ni mrembo. This girl is beautiful. Msichana huyu ni mrembo. Mvulana, boy. Mvulana, mvulana, boy. Mvulana alipotea msituni. The boy got lost in the forest. Mvulana 
Alipotea msitoni. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! You are at a bus terminal where you stumble across a notice at one of the stops. What does the notice say? What does the notice say? The notice reads, this bus route is no longer in service. Hii njia ya basi haihudumu tena. In this video, you will learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So. After you have learned the new words and phrases, stick around, review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own fresh deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay. Let's get started. First is Furahi, happy. Furahi, Furahi, happy. Nimefurahia kuatembelea huku Nairobi. I am happy to visit you here in Nairobi. Nimefurahia kuatembelea Huku Nairobi. Huzunika. Sad. Huzunika. Huzunika. Sad. Kijana alia huzunika amekaa peke yake. The sad teenager is sitting alone. Kijana alia huzunika amekaa peke yake. Kasirika. Angry. Kasirika. Kasirika. Angry. Rafiki zangu watakasirika nisipotumia zawadi. My friends will get angry if I don't send them some souvenirs. Rafiki zangu watakasirika nisipotumia zawadi. Nguo. Clothing. Nguo, nguo, clothing, matabaka ya nguo, layers of clothing, matabaka ya nguo. Viatu, shoe, viatu, viatu, shoe. Natafuta viatu, I am looking for some shoes. Natafuta viatu. Soxi. Sock. Soxi. Soxi. Sock. 
Badilisha hizo soksi zinanuka. Change those socks, they are stinking. Badilisha hizo soksi zinanuka. Chupi, underwear. Chupi, chupi, underwear. Soksi na chupi zangu ziko katika kidawati cha juu cha kabati yangu ya nguo. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. Soksi na chupi zangu ziko katika kidawati cha juu cha kabati yangu ya nguo. Ongea. Talk. Ongea. Ongea. Talk. Tafazali zima luninga ninapoongea na wewe. Please switch off the TV while I'm talking to you. Tafadhali zima luninga ninapoongea na wewe. Peana. Give. Peana. Peana. Give. Kupeana kiti. Give up a seat. Kupeana kiti. Chini. Low. Chini. Chini. Low. Vipimo vyangu vya sukali viko chini. My sugar levels are low. Vipimo vyangu vya sukali viko chini. You, hi. You, you, hi. Eneo hii inajulikana sana kwa hali yake ya juu ya uhalifu. This area is widely known for its high climb rate. Eneo hii inajulikana sana kwa hali yake ya juu ya uhalifu. Tunda, fruit. Tunda, tunda, fruit. Matunda haya yameharibika sana. These fruits are very spoiled. Matunda haya yameharibika sana. Pweza, octopus. Pweza, pweza, octopus. Pweza anogelea kwenye bahari. The octopus is swimming in the ocean. Pweza anogelea kwenye bahari. Papa, shark. Papa, papa. Shark. Huu mwaka, wiki ya papa itaanza mapema. This year, shark week starts earlier. Huu mwaka, wiki ya papa itaanza mapema. Nyangumi. Well. Nyangumi. Nyangumi. Well. Nyangumi wanakuja juu kupata hewa. The whales are coming up for air. Nyangumi wanakuja juu kupata hewa. Mawingu. Cloudy. Mawingu. Mawingu. Cloudy. Anga ya nje inabadilika kuwa mawingu. It's getting cloudy outside. Anga ya nje inabadilika kuwa mawingu. Baridi. Cool. Balidi. Baridi. Cool. Kama kuna balidi, unafaa uoge na majimoto. When it's cool, you should shower with hot water. Kama kuna baridi, unafaa uoge na majimoto. Tango. Kikimba. Tango. 
tango. Kiyokiumba. Tango hili ni lefu na nyimbamba. This kiyokiumba is long and thin. Tango hili ni lefu na nyimbamba. Pilipili hoho. Bell pepper. Pilipili hoho. Pilipili hoho. Bell pepper. Pilipili hoho zinazopatikana sana ni za kijani kibichi, nyekundu na manjano. The most common bell peppers are green, red or yellow. Pilipili hoho zinazopatikana sana ni za kijani kibichi, nyekundu na manjano. Broccoli. Broccoli. Blokoli, blokoli, blokori. Agiza supu ya blokoli. Order the blokori soup. Agiza supu ya blokoli. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you have read the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard desk, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is... Kiganja chamkono, hand. Kiganja chamkono. Kiganja chamkono, hand. Mtoto anainua kiganja chamkono wake. The child is raising his hand. Mtoto anainua kiganja cha Mkono wake. Mkono. Arm. Mkono. Mkono. Arm. Mkono wa misuri. Muscular arm. Mkono wa misuri. Ngu. Foot. Ngoo. Ngoo. Foot. Ngoo una vidole vitano. A foot has five toes. Ngoo una vidole vitano. Ngoo. Leg. Ngu. Ngu. Leg. Migu. Mirefu. Long legs. Migu. Mirefu. Kidole. Finger. Kidole. Ki. Dole, finger. Kidole changu kinatokwa na damu. My fingers bleeding. 
kidole changu kinatokwa na damu mgongo back mgongo mgongo wa kalungu yeye umefunikwa na micheche kali a hedgehog's back is covered in sharp spines mgongo wa kalungu yeye umefunikwa na micheche kali tumbo stomach tumbo tumbo stomach nilikula kupita kiasi sasa hivi tumbo langu linauma i ate too much and now my stomach hurts nilikula kupita kiasi sasa hivi tumbo langu linauma kifua chest kifua kifua kinauma i have chest pains kifua kinauma january 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 mali hapa ni baridi katika mwezi wa january It's very cold here in January. Mahali hapa ni baridi katika mwezi wa January. February. 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 Februari ndiyo mwezi mfupi zaidi ukiwa na siku 28. February is the shortest month with 28 days. Februari ndiyo mwezi mfupi zaidi ukiwa na siku 28. Machi. March. Machi. Machi. March. Sasa ni mwezi wa Aprili. Kwa hivyo mwezi jana ulikuwa Machi. It's now April. So last month was March. Sasa ni mwezi wa Aprili. Kwa hivyo mwezi jana ulikuwa Machi. Aprili. April. Aprili. Aprili. April. Mvua ya Aprili huleta maua ya mwezi wa Mei. April showers brings May flowers. Mvua ya Aprili huleta maua ya mwezi wa Mei. 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 Mei 31 ni siku ya kutovuta sigala duniani kote. May 31st is World No Smoking Day. Mei 31 ni siku ya kutovuta sigara duniani kote. Juni Jun Juni Juni Jun Tutaoana katika mwezi wa Juni. We are getting married in June. Tutaoana katika mwezi wa Juni. July. 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 Julai ni jina lilotunikiwa Julius Caesar aliyezaliwa mwezi wa Julai. Julai is named for Julius Caesar who was born in July. Julai ni jina lilotunikiwa Julius Caesar aliyezaliwa mwezi wa Julai. Agosti. August. Agosti. Agosti. 
August. Shule hufungwa katika mwezi wa Agosti. The school is closed in August. Shule hufungwa katika mwezi wa Agosti. September. 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 Leo ni Jumamosi, mwezi wa Septemba siku ya kumi. Today is Saturday, September 10th. Leo ni Jumamosi, mwezi wa Septemba siku ya kumi. October. 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 October kumi na tatu. On October 13th. October kumi na tatu. November. 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 November ni moja wapo ya miezi binne iliyo na siku 30. November is one of the four months with 30 days. November ni moja wapo ya miezi binne iliyo na siku 30. December. 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 Watu hungoja mwezi wa December sana ili kusherekea Krismasi. People wait for the month of December so that they can celebrate Christmas. Watu hungoja mwezi wa December sana ili kusherekea Krismasi. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swailpod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Diana. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lesson at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what we have learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is... Saidia. Help. Saidia. Sa-i-di-a. Help. J. Unaweza kutusaidia kupata viti vietu? Can you help us find our seats? J. Unaweza kutusaidia kupata viti vietu? Kujifunza. Learn. Kujifunza. Kujifunza. Learn. Fikiria kwa lugha unayotaka kujifunza. Think in the language you want to learn. Fikiria kwa lugha unayotaka kujifunza. Hama. Move. Hama. Hama. Move. Wafugaji wa ngombe huhama na mifugo yao kutoka sehemu moja hadi nyingine kwa minajili ya kutafuta malisho. The nomadic pastoralists move with their herds from place to place in search of greener pastures. 
wafugaji wa ngombe kuhama na mifugo yao kutoka sehemu moja hadi nyingine kwa minajili ya kutafuta malisho. 17 Bintie ana umri wa miaka 17 His daughter is 17 years old Bintie ana umri wa miaka 17 18 18 Watu wa umri chini ya 18 hawaruhusiwi kwenda disco. People below the age of 18 are not allowed to go to the discos. Watu wa umri chini ya 18 hawaruhusiwi kwenda disco. 19 19 kumi na tisa. Nineteen. Kuna vitabu kumi na tisa hapa. There are nineteen books here. Kuna vitabu kumi na tisa hapa. Ishirini. Twenty. Ishirini. Ishirini. Twenty. Nitakupa shilingi 20. I will give you 20 shillings. Nitakupa shilingi 20. Shingo. Neck. Shingo. Shingo. Neck. Kuna nundu ya ajabu juu ya shingo yangu. There is a strange lump on my neck. Kuna nundu ya ajabu juu ya shingo yangu. Uso. Face. Uso. Uso. Face. Unaweza kunionyesha uso wako wenye ucheshi mno? Can you show me your funniest face? Unaweza kunionyesha uso wako wenye ucheshi mno? Sikio. Ia. Sikio. Sikio. Ia. Nina masikio mawili. I have two ears. Nina masikio mawili. Nywele. Hair. Nywele. Nywele. Hair. Je, unaweza kunyorosha nywele yangu? Could you straighten my hair? Je, Unaweza kunyorosha nywele yangu? Mlima. Mountain. Mlima. Mlima. Mountain. Nilipanda mlima utao Fuji katika safari yangu ya Japan. I climbed a mountain called Fuji during my trip to Japan. Nilipanda mlima uitwao Fuji katika safari yangu ya Japan. Pwani Beach Pwani Pwani Beach Kupumzika kwenye pwani Relax at the beach Kupumzika kwenye pwani Msitu Rainforest. Msitu. M C two. Rainforests. Lazima tuhifadhi msitu na mazingira. We have to conserve the rainforest and nature. 
lazima tuhifadhi msitu na mazingira kisiwa island kisiwa ki si wa island kuna kustarehe kwingi katika kisiwa cha Zanzibar there is a lot of relaxation on the island of Zanzibar kuna kustarehe kwingi katika kisiwa cha Zanzibar kamusi dictionary kamusi ka mu si dictionary kuwa na kamusi yako karibu kuboresha misamiati yako have your dictionary ready to help improve your vocabulary kuwa na kamusi yako karibu kuboresha misamiati yako blue 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 alichagua gari ya blue he chose a blue car alichagua gari la blue manjano yellow manjano ma nja no yellow hana ana kofia ya manjano hana has a yellow hat hana ana kofia ya manjano rangi ya machungwa orange rangi ya machungwa rangi ya machungwa orange Rangi nyekundu ikichanganywa na manjano inakuwa rangi ya machungwa. Red mixed with yellow becomes orange. Rangi nyekundu ikichanganywa na manjano inakuwa rangi ya machungwa. Rangi kala Rangi rangi kala Ningependa kubadilisha rangi ya nywele yangu. I would like to change my hair color. Ningependa kubadilisha rangi ya nywele yangu. Well done. In this lesson you expounded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipodwano1.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anapiga simu kuhifadhi tiketi ya tamthilia. Alipata viti gani mbili? Hello. Hili ni chumba cha michezo cha Black Friars. Naweza kukusaidia? Ningalipenda kupata tiketi mbili ya King Lear saa moja unusu jioni wa leo. Je, bado una viti zinazoweza kupatikana? Tuna nafasi chache zilizobaki. Samahani, lakini hatuna viti vinavyofuatana. Hata hivyo, ukipenda tunaweza kupa viti mbili tofauti. Sawa, hatujali. Je, una jambo lingine la kuuliza? Je, una viti vyovyote vya njia? Ndio. Tuna kiti karibu na njia katika upande wa kushoto sehemu ya katikati. Na kulia kwake baada ya viti tatu kuna kiti kingine wazi. Katika sehemu ya upande? Sawa. Hivyo basi nipe hicho kiti. Hakika. Je, na kile kingine? Una kiti karibu na sehemu ya kati? Viti vilivyobaki ni kutoka mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu. 
Sijali sana kuhusu kutemewa mate na waigizaji. Kwa hivyo, chumba hiki ni kidogo. Nadhani utaweza penda tamthilia hii hata ukiwa mwisho wa mstari wa upande. Kweli. Kwa hivyo, nitachukua kile ulichotaja mbeleni katika sehemu ya kushoto. Alipata viti gani mbili? Mwanamke anapiga simu kuhifadhi tiketi ya tamthilia. Alipata viti gani mbili? Hello. Hili ni chumba cha michezo cha Black Friars. Naweza kukusaidia? Ningalipenda kupata tiketi mbili ya King Lear saa moja unusu jioni wa leo. Je, bado una viti zinazoweza kupatikana? Tuna nafasi chache zilizobaki. Samahani, lakini hatuna viti vinavyofuatana. Hata hivyo, ukipenda tunaweza kupa viti mbili tofauti. Sawa, hatujali. Je, una jambo lingine la kuuliza? Je, una viti vyovyote vya njia? Ndio. Tuna kiti karibu na njia katika upande wa kushoto sehemu ya katikati. Na kulia kwake baada ya viti tatu kuna kiti kingine wazi. Katika sehemu ya upande? Sawa. Hivyo basi nipe hicho kiti. Hakika Je, na kile kingine? Una kiti karibu na sehemu ya kati? Viti vilivyobaki ni kutoka mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu. Sijali sana kuhusu kutemewa mate na waigizaji. Kwa hivyo, chumba hiki ni kidogo. Nadhani utaweza penda tamthilia hii hata ukiwa mwisho wa mstari wa upande. Kweli. Kwa hivyo, Nitachukua kile ulichotaja mbeleni katika sehemu ya kushoto. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Unasikiza utabiri wa hali ya anga. Utabiri wa hali ya anga uko vipi? Tutakuwa na jua asubuhi. Lakini kutakuwa na mawingu wa dhuhuri na kutanyesha usiku. Mvua utaendelea usiku kucha hadi kesho asubuhi wakati jua utakapoanza kuchomoka Utabiri wa hali ya anga uko vipi? Unasikiza utabiri wa hali ya anga? Utabiri wa hali ya anga uko vipi? Tutakuwa na jua asubuhi. Lakini Kutakuwa na mawingu wa dhuhuri na kutanyesha usiku. Mvua utaendelea usiku kucha hadi kesho asubuhi wakati jua utakapoanza kuchomoka. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anakula chakula cha mchana katika mgahawa. Ataagiza nini? Je, ungelipenda kunywa kahawa au kukula kiburudisho tamu baada ya mlo? Una kiburudisho tamu gani? Tuna faluda na keki ya tufaha. Mhm. Kwa kweli nataka kahawa tu tafadhali. Je, unataka sukari na maziwa? Tafadhali lete na maziwa. Ataagiza nini?
mwanamke anakula chakula cha mchana katika mgahawa. Ataagiza nini? Je, ungelipenda kunywa kahawa au kukula kiburudisho tamu baada ya mlo? Una kiburudisho tamu gani? Tuna faluda na keki ya tufaha. Mhm. Kwa kweli nataka kahawa tu tafadhali. Je, unataka sukari na maziwa? Tafadhali lete na maziwa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anamuliza mtu palipo stesheni ya basi. Stesheni ya basi liko wapi? Samahani. Unajua kama kuna stesheni la basi hapa karibu? Ndio. Kwanza enda fululizo kisha ugeuke kulia kwa taya trafiki ya pili. Kisha geuka kushoto kwenye kona la duka la vitabu na utaona benki. Stesheni la basi liko mbele ya benki. Nimeelewa. Asante sana. Stesheni ya basi liko wapi? Mwanamke anamuliza mtu palipo stesheni ya basi. Stesheni ya basi liko wapi? Samahani, unajua kama kuna stesheni la basi hapa karibu? Ndio. Kwanza enda fululizo kisha ugeuke kulia kwa taya trafiki ya pili. Kisha Geuka kushoto kwenye kona la duka la vitabu na utaona benki. Stesheni la basi liko mbele ya benki. Nimeelewa. Asante sana. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You are at a bus terminal where you're attempting to buy a ticket from a ticket counter. There are four different counters. Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? The third counter is the counter for bus tickets that go to the south side of the city. Kwa kusini, mwajiji. Trying to learn Swahili? Learn lightning fast with the Innovative Language 101 app. Download it now for free for the iPhone, iPad, or any Android device. And start speaking in minutes with this powerful language learning tool. What makes it so special? Get instant access to hundreds of fun and effective audio and video lessons. Enjoy learning with real lessons from real teachers. Master reading and grammar with comprehensive lesson notes. Perfect your pronunciation with line-by-line -line audio. Wow native Swahili speakers with cultural insights. Learn offline by downloading lessons to any device. Stay motivated as you watch your Swahili grow on your progress tracking dashboard. Stay up to date with instant notification of new lessons. Take lessons that are right for you, whether you're just getting started or already an advanced learner. Discover for yourself why millions of Innovative Language 101 app users are learning lightning fast. Download the Innovative Language 101 app for free right now. Pick your language. 
sign up for a free lifetime account and start speaking from the very first lesson. Already a member? Simply download the Innovative Language 101 app for free. Pick your language and log in. Pick up your progress as the app knows where you left off. Getting on the fast track to fluency is that simple. The Innovative Language 101 app. Instant access to fun and effective Swahili lessons anywhere, anytime. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanazungumza. Watafanya nini kwanza? Unataka kufanya nini leo? Nataka kwenda kuona sinema. Sawa. Nataka kuona mchezo wa besiboli kwenye runinga. Pia nataka kwenda kufanya manunuzi. Mchezo wa besiboli utaanza saa saba mchana. Sawa. Basi tutazame sinema kwanza kisha utatazama mchezo wa besiboli. Sawa. Hivyo basi tutafanya manunuzi jioni. Watafanya nini kwanza? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanazungumza. Watafanya nini kwanza? Unataka kufanya nini leo? Nataka kwenda kuona sinema. Sawa. Nataka kuona mchezo wa besiboli kwenye runinga. Pia nataka kwenda kufanya manunuzi. Mchezo wa besiboli utaanza saa saba mchana. Sawa. Basi tutazame sinema kwanza kisha utatazama mchezo wa besiboli. Sawa. Hivyo basi tutafanya manunuzi jioni. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamume ana miaka mingapi sasa? Sikukuu yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndio. Ni siku baada ya kesho. Unaenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera. Wacha tushereheke. Asante sana. Nashukuru sana. Mwanamume ana miaka mingapi sasa? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamume ana miaka mingapi sasa? Sikukuu yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndio. Ni siku baada ya kesho. Unaenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera. Wacha tushereheke. Asante sana. Nashukuru sana. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mtu anazungumza na karani wa duka. Atanunua shati gani? Hmm. Unafikiri shati gani ni bora? Shati nyeupe au ya blue? Nadhani ya blue ni nzuri. Inaenda vizuri na koti yako ya kijivu. Unafikiri hivyo? Lakini haiendi vizuri na tai yangu nyekundu. Sivyo? Naam, ni kweli. Sawa. Hivyo basi, nitachukua nyeupe, sio ya blue. Atanunua shati gani?
mtu anazungumza na karani wa duka atanunua shati gani hmm unafikiri shati gani ni bora shati nyeupe au ya blue nadhani ya blue ni nzuri inaenda vizuri na koti yako ya kijivu unafikiri hivyo lakini haiendi vizuri na tai yangu nyekundu sivyo naam ni kweli sawa hivyo basi nitachukua nyeupe sio ya blue did you get it right i hope you learned something from this quiz let us know if you have any questions see you next time in this video you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Diana. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lesson at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what we have learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is nyeupe. White. Nyeupe. Nyeupe. White. Ni vigumu kuweka furniture nyeupe safi. It is difficult to keep white furniture clean. Ni vigumu kuweka furniture nyeupe safi. Nyekundu. Red. Nyekundu. Nyekundu. Red. Rangi nyekundu huvuma sana wakati wa sikukuu ya wapenda nao. The red color is popular during Valentine's Day. Rangi nyekundu huvuma sana wakati wa sikukuu ya wapenda nao. Kijani. Green. Kijani. Kijani. Green. Kondo anakula nyasi ya kijani kibichi. The sheep is eating the green grass. Kondo anakula nyasi ya kijani kibichi. Maliza. Finish. Maliza. Maliza. Finish. Je, umemaliza kazi ya ziada? Did you finish your homework? Je, umemaliza kazi ya ziada? Anza. Start. Anza. Anza. Start. Unaweza kuanzisha moto. Can you start a fire? Unaweza kuanzisha moto. Kuwa. Become. Kuwa. Kuwa. Become. Ilinichukua mwaka mmoja tu kuwa muongeza. It took me only one year to become fluent. Ilinichukua mwaka mmoja tu kuwa muongeza. 14 14 Ako na miaka 14. He is 14 years old. Ako na miaka 14. Nne. Kumi na tano. Fifteen. Kumi na tano. Kumi na tano. 
15. Ningoje dakika 15. Wait for me for 15 minutes. Ningoje dakika 15. 16. 16. 16. 16. Tuko na dakika 16. We have 16 minutes. Tuko na dakika kumi na sita. Simu. Telephone. Simu. Simu. Telephone. Simu inalia. The telephone is ringing. Simu inalia. Jicho. I. Jicho. Jicho. I. Shampoo ikingia kwenye jicho lako, iyoshe kwa maji mara moja. If some of the shampoo gets in your eyes, rinse them with water immediately. Shampoo ikingia kwenye jicho lako, osha kwa maji mara moja. Meno. Teeth. Meno. Me no. Teeth. Ulipiga meno mswaki? Did you brush your teeth? Ulipiga meno mswaki? Mdomo wa ju. Lip. Mdomo wa ju. Mdomo wa ju. Lip. Uko na kitu kwa mdomo wako wa juu. You have something on your lip. Uko na kitu kwa mdomo wako wa juu. Na kalapacha. Copy machine. Na kalapacha. Na kalapacha. Copy machine. Naweza tumia hiyo na kalapacha? Can I use the copy machine? Naweza tumia hiyo na kalapacha. Dawati. Desk. Dawati. Dawati. Desk. Dawati hiyo ni kubwa sana kwa ofisi hii ndogo. That desk is too big for this small office. Dawati hiyo ni kubwa sana kwa ofisi hii ndogo. Kitabu. Book. Kitabu. Kitabu. Book. J. Unaweza kushikilia kitabu hiki ninaposoma? Can you hold this book while I'm reading it? J. Unaweza kushikilia kitabu hiki ninaposoma? Kalamu. Pen. Kalamu. Kalamu. Pen. Sina hata kalamu. I don't even have a pen. Sina hata kalamu. Ofisi ya posta. Post office. Ofisi ya posta. Ofisi ya posta. Post office. Kuna ofisi ya posta katika barabara hii. There is a post office in this street. Kuna ofisi ya posta katika barabara hii. Maktaba. Library. Maktaba. Maktaba. Library. Maktaba iko pale. The library is over there. Maktaba iko pale. Duka la kijumla. 
supermarket duka la kijumla duka la kijumla supermarket hili duka la kijumla linauza vitu kwa bei nafuu this supermarket is selling things at discount prices hili duka la kijumla linauza vitu kwa bei nafuu well done in this lesson you expounded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's the matter? After watching this video, you'll be able to make complaints and ask someone else if they're having any issues. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, Click the link in the description to download your Making Complaints PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inajoto. Once more with the English translation. Kila kitu kisawa. What's the matter? Ofisi inajoto. The office is hot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's the matter? That's... Kila kitu kisawa. Listen to it again. Kila kitu kisawa. Kila kitu kisawa. This Swahili sentence literally translates into, is everything okay? But it means, what's the matter in English? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is, Ofisi ina. Adjective. The office is adjective. For example, the office is hot. Ofisi ina joto. Ofisi ina joto. Here are a few more examples you can use with the same pattern to make complaints. Hot. Joto. Joto. Cold. Baridi. Baridi. Noisy. Kelele. Kelele. Dirty. Uchafu. Uchafu. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inabaridi. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inakelele. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's the matter? Kila kitu kisawa. Imagine the office is cold. Do you remember how to say, cold? Baridi. Baridi. Say, the office is cold. Oh.
Ofisi ina baridi. Now answer the question saying the office is cold. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina baridi. Now imagine the office is noisy. Do you remember how to say noisy? Kelele. Kelele. Say, the office is noisy. Ofisi ina kelele. Now, answer the question saying the office is noisy. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina kelele. Now imagine the office is dirty. Do you remember how to say dirty? Uchafu. Uchafu. Say, the office is dirty. Ofisi ina uchafu. Now answer the question, saying the office is dirty. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to make complaints. You are now able to share your concerns like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Make any complaints you may have today. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi. Na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri. Ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Nani anaishi na mwanamme? Mbona usikuje kwa nyumba yangu wakati mwingine hivi karibuni? Asante. Lakini nahisi kuogopa kidogo. Ningelipenda kujua familia yako kabla sijakutana nao. Sawa. Babangu ni mfanyikazi wa ofisi. Na kozi yake ni kuvua. Mamangu ni mkazi wa nyumba na anajua kupika. Una ndugu au dada wowote? Ndio, nina dada mkubwa na ndugu mdogo. Dadangu ameoleka na anaishi Ulaya. Ndugu yangu ni mwanafunzi katika shule ya upili. Una familia nzuri. Ningelipenda kukutana na kuongea nao. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody. My name is Getty. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. 
This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is mafuriko, flood. Mafuriko, ma fu ri -ko. flood. Gari, mtindo wa jeep, linasukumiza katika mafuriko. The jeep is pushing through the flood. Gari, mtindo wa jeep, linasukumiza katika mafuriko. Kimbunga, typhoon. Kimbunga, kimbunga, typhoon. Kimbunga kimetokea. The typhoon has hit. Kimbunga kimetokea. Tufani. Hurricane. Tufani. Tufani. Hurricane. Tufani linapulizika ndani kutoka kwenye bahari. The hurricane is blowing in from the sea. Tufani linapulizika ndani kutoka kwenye bahari. Chamchela, tornado. Chamchela, chamchela, tornado. Chamchela linasongea mjini. The tornado is approaching the town. Cha mchela linasongea mjini. Ukame, drought. Ukame, ukame, drought. Ukame ni janga la ukweli kwa wakulima. Drought is a real trouble for farmers. Ukame ni janga la ukweli kwa wakulima Uislamu Islam Uislamu Uislamu Islam Dini ya Uislamu ilianzishwa na Nabii Muhammad Islam was founded by the Prophet Muhammad Dini ya Uislamu ilianzishwa na Nabii Muhammad U Protestanti Protestantism. U protestanti. U protestanti. Protestantism. U protestanti ulianzishwa baada ya kujitenga kwa kanisa ya katoliki ya kirumi. Protestantism came as a break from the Roman Catholic Church. U protestanti ulianzishwa baada ya kujitenga kwa kanisa ya kikatoliki ya kirumi Ukatoliki Catholicism Ukatoliki Ukatoliki Catholicism Ukatoliki ni dini ya wale wanaokubali uongozi wa Papa Catholicism is the religion of those who accept the leadership of the Pope Ukatoliki ni dini ya wale wanaokubali uongozi wa papa uhindu hinduism uhindu uhindu hinduism uhindu kutoka india unahusisha itikadi na kufufuka na kuamini miungu mingi hinduism from india involves the belief in reincarnation and many gods Uhindu kutoka India unahusisha itikadi ya kufufuka na kuamini miungu mingi. 
Ubuda. Buddhism. Ubuda. Ubuda. Buddhism. Ubuda unahusika na mafunzo ya Buddha aliyelekevuka. Buddhism is based on the teachings of the Buddha, the enlightened one. Ubuda unahusika na mafunzo ya Buddha aliyelekevuka. Kifundo cha mguu uncle Kifundo cha mguu Kifundo cha mguu uncle Nikidhani nimeteguka kifundo cha mguu I think I sprained my ankle Nikidhani nimeteguka kifundo cha mguu Kiwiko elbow Kiwiko ki we ko elbow mkono hujikunja njia moja kwa kiwiko the arm only bends one way at the elbow mkono hujikunja njia moja kwa kiwiko fundo la mkono wrist fundo la mkono fundo la mkono wrist mahali maarufu kabisa kuchukua mpigo wa moyo ni kwa shingo na kwa fundo la mkono the most common places to take a pulse at the neck and the wrist mahali maarufu kabisa kuchukua mpigo wa moyo ni kwa shingo na kwa fundo la mkono goti ni goti go ti ni kijana alianguka na kugwaruza goti lake the boy fell and scraped his knees kijana alianguka na kugwaruza goti lake ngozi skin ngozi ngo zi skin ngozi ndiyo sehemu kubwa sana mwilini skin is the largest organ in the body ngozi ndiyo sehemu kubwa sana mwilini kunyoa ndevu shave kunyoa ndevu kunyoa ndevu Shev. Alisahau kunyua ndevu asubuhi ya leo. He forgot to shave this morning. Alisahau kunyoa ndevu asubuhi ya leo. Mpishi. Chef. Mpishi. Mpishi. Chef. Mpishi anatengeneza chakula. The chef is making a meal. Mpishi anatengeneza chakula. Pasipovutwa sigara. Non smoking. Pasipovutwa sigara. Pasipovutwa sigara. Non smoking. Napendelea kukaa pasipovutwa sigara. My preference is to sit in the non-smoking section. Napendelea kukaa pasipovutwa sigara. Uvutaji sigara. Smoking. Uvutaji sigara. Uvutaji sigara. Smoking. Kuna sehemu ya kuvuta sigara iliyoshikana na mkahawa. There's a separate patio for smoking attached to the restaurant kuna sehemu ya kuvuta sigara iliyoshikana na mkahawa damu blood damu damu blood papa zinashawishiwa na mnuko wa damu 
the sharks are lured in by the smell of blood. Papa zinashawishiwa na mnuko wa damu. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilipod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when talking on the phone. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for someone on the phone and to put someone on hold. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making a Phone Call PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Jambo, ningependa kuzungumza na mtu ambaye amesimamia. Hakika, tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Once more with the English translation. Jambo, ningependa kuzungumza na mtu ambaye amesimamia. Hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Hakika, Tafadali ngoja dakika moja. Okay, just a moment. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say hello on the phone. That's... Jambo. Jambo. Then, you'll need to learn how to say, I'd like to speak with person. The pattern is... Ningependa kuzungumza nam... Person. For example, hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Jambo, ningependa kuzungumza na mtu ambaye amesimamia. Jambo, ningependa kuzungumza na mtu ambaye amesimamia. Now, how do you answer this question? Hakika. Tafadali ngoja dakika moja. Okay, just a moment. Listen to it again. Hakika. Tafadali ngoja dakika moja. Hakika. Tafadali ngoja dakika moja. This Swahili sentence literally translates as, sure, please wait minute one, but it means, okay, just a moment. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk on the phone. The person in charge. Mtu ambaye amesimamia. Mtu ambaye amesimamia. A sales representative. Mwakilishi wa mauzo. Mwakilishi wa mauzo. The manager. 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 Customer service. Huduma ya wateja. Huduma ya wateja. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Ningependa kuzungumza na mwakilishi wa mauzo. Hakika, tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Ningependa kuzungumza na meneja. Hakika, 
Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Ningependa kuzungumza na huduma ya wateja. Hakika. Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'd like to speak with person? Ningependa kuzungumza nam person. And how do you answer it? Hakika. Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Imagine you want to talk to a sales representative. Do you remember how to say a sales representative? Mwakilishi wa mauzo. Mwakilishi wa mauzo. Say, I'd like to speak with a sales representative. Ningependa kuzungumza na mwakilishi wa mauzo. Now say you want to talk to a sales representative and answer it. Ningependa kuzungumza na mwakilishi wa mauzo. Hakika. Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Now, imagine you want to talk to the manager. Do you remember how to say the manager? Manager. Manager. Say, I'd like to speak with the manager. Ningependa kuzungumza na manager. Now say you want to talk to the manager and answer it. Ningependa kuzungumza na manager. Hakika. Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. Now imagine you want to talk to customer service. Do you remember how to say customer service? Huduma ya wateja. Huduma ya wateja. Say, I'd like to speak with customer service. Ningependa kuzungumza na huduma ya wateja. Now say you want to talk to customer service and answer it. Ningependa kuzungumza na huduma ya wateja. Hakika. Tafadhali ngoja dakika moja. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk on the phone. You're now able to answer the phone like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell us and your fellow learners whom you'd like to call. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Manager of supermarket ya naongea na mfanyikazi wake. Watapangaje mikate yao? Mikate yetu ya jibini haziuzi vizuri. Sivyo? La. Pengine ni vile zilikuwa juu ya rafu. Naam, labda ni ndefu sana kwa watu wazee. Pengine hawawezi hata kuziona. Na ni vipi ukiziweka kwenye rafu ya katikati? Vyema. 
wanaweza kuziona kwanza wakija kwenye duka na mbona tusiweke nguo nyekundu katika rafu hii ili wajue ni mkate wetu mpya sawa basi tapaswa tusongeze croissant mahali pengine tofauti juu au chini nadhani tuweke bidhaa maarufu zaidi juu ya rafu itauza zaidi hata kama haionekani kwa urahisi basi hiyo itapaswa iwe mkate wa kifaransa na ni vipi kuziweka kwenye kikapu ili zionekane kwa urahisi wazo nzuri tufanye hivyo kwa hivyo croissant zitapaswa ziwe chini unaweza kujaribu kuziweka ni vipi inaonekana vizuri wacha tuone kama hii itaathiri mauzo ya wiki ijayo Watapangaje mikate yao? Meneja wa supermarket anaongea na mfanyikazi wake. Watapangaje mikate yao? Mikate yetu ya jibini haziuzi vizuri. Sivyo? La, pengine ni vile zilikuwa juu ya rafu. Naam, labda ni ndefu sana kwa watu wazee. Pengine Hawawezi hata kuziona. Na ni vipi ukiziweka kwenye rafu ya katikati? Vyema. Wanaweza kuziona kwanza wakija kwenye duka. Na mbona tusiweke nguo nyekundu katika rafu hii ili wajue ni mkate wetu mpya? Sawa. Basi tapaswa tusongeze croissant mahali pengine tofauti, juu au chini. Nadhani tuweke bidhaa maarufu zaidi juu ya rafu. Itauza zaidi hata kama haionekani kwa urahisi. Basi hiyo itapaswa iwe mkate wa Kifaransa. Na ni vipi kuziweka kwenye kikapu ili zionekane kwa urahisi? Wazo nzuri. Tufanye hivyo. Kwa hivyo croissant zitapaswa ziwe chini. Unaweza kujaribu kuziweka? Ni vipi? Inaonekana vizuri. Wacha tuone kama hii itaathiri mauzo ya wiki ijayo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's the matter? After watching this video, you'll be able to make complaints and ask someone else if they're having any issues. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making Complaints PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina joto. Once more with the English translation. Kila kitu kisawa. What's the matter? Ofisi ina joto. The office is hot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, what's the matter? That's... Kila kitu kisawa. Listen to it again. Kila kitu kisawa. Kila kitu kisawa. This Swahili sentence literally translates into, is everything okay? But it means, what's the matter in English? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Ofisi ina Adjective The office is adjective. For example, the office is hot. Ofisi ina joto Ofisi ina joto Here are a few more examples you can use with the same pattern to make complaints. 
hot. Joto. Joto. Cold. Baridi. Baridi. Noisy. Kelele. Kelele. Dirty. Uchafu. Uchafu. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inabaridi. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi inakelele. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's the matter? Kila kitu kisawa. Imagine the office is cold. Do you remember how to say cold? Baridi. Baridi. Say, the office is cold. Ofisi ina baridi. Now answer the question saying the office is cold. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina baridi. Now imagine the office is noisy. Do you remember how to say noisy? Kelele. Kelele. Say, the office is noisy. Ofisi ina kelele. Now, answer the question saying the office is noisy. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina kelele. Now imagine the office is dirty. Do you remember how to say dirty? Uchafu. Uchafu. Say, the office is dirty. Ofisi ina uchafu. Now answer the question, saying the office is dirty. Kila kitu kisawa. Ofisi ina uchafu. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to make complaints. You are now able to share your concerns like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Make any complaints you may have today. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jumbo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jumbo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is 
Habari za asubuhi. Good morning. Habari za asubuhi. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say habari za asubuhi. Good morning. Habari za mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is habari za mchana. Good afternoon. Habari za mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari za mchana. Habari means news, so you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time, and you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa. Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I do not want to meet you, you know? <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani. How are you? Habarigani. How are you? Habari in Swahili means news, and Ghani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but, you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante. Nawewe, I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern, so you ask. Nawewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say tafadhali. Excuse me, tafadhali, tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante, thank you. Asante, thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to tafadhali, please. You know, asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstance where someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke. But you know what? You can go and ask, the, or you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu. I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously, though. <laughs> Dio, yes. Dio, yes. Dio. Dio 
is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say dio if it's a positive answer, I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. Dio. Umefika Kenya? Dio. Umekula chakula? Dio. Umefika Kenya means, have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is Dio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say Dio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes, no question. Just like Dio. Dio means yes, as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see, see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off the check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi. Msala niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani niwapi. Now, for real, you may need this word, really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani ni wapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi nini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo nini. How much is this dress? Saidia. Help. Saidia. Help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with her or him, you'll definitely say, Bye, see you later, when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting, you know? I will never want to say kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to utter it out, but I will just say it with tears rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, kwaheri. It's a good word to use whenever you're parting. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. 
E. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say isijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit SwahiliPod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwalimu na mwanafunzi wanaongea. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Sikuelewa kamwe kila kitu katika darasa ya leo. Hakika, je, una maswali yeyote? Ndiyo, nina mengi kabisa. Je, una muda sasa? Nina shughuli kidogo sasa. Tafadhali, njoo kwa ofisi yangu mchana. Nitakuwepo kuanzia saa saba hadi saa kumi. Sawa, nitakuwa pale saa nne mchana. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Mwalimu na mwanafunzi wanaongea. Nilini mwanafunzi ataenda kwa ofisi ya mwalimu? Sikuelewa kamwe kila kitu katika darasa ya leo. Hakika, je, una maswali yeyote? Ndiyo, nina mengi kabisa. Je, Una muda sasa? Nina shughuli kidogo sasa. Tafadhali, njoo kwa ofisi yangu mchana. Nitakuwepo kuanzia saa saba hadi saa kumi. Sawa. Nitakuwa pale saa nne mchana. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Repeat after the speaker when you hear the beep. Mama. Mama. Mother. Mama. 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 Baba. Baba. Father. Baba. 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 Dada Mdogo. Dadam Dogo. Younger sister. Dadam Dogo. Dadam Dogo. Dadam Dogo. Dadam Kubwa. Dadam Kubwa. Older sister. Dadam Kubwa. Dadam Kubwa. Dadam Kubwa.
ndugu mkubwa ndugu mkubwa older brother ndugu mkubwa ndugu mkubwa ndugu mkubwa ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo younger brother ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo ndugu mdogo nyanya nyanya grandmother nyanya 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 babu babu grandfather babu 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 shangazi shangazi ant shangazi 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 Mjomba Mjomba Uncle Mjomba 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 Binamu Binamu Cousin Binamu 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 Mume Mume Husband Mume 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 Mke Mke Wife Mke 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 Mwana wa kiume Mwana wa kiume Son Mwana wa kiume Mwana wa kiume Mwana wa kiume Mwana wa kike Mwana wa kike Daughter Mwana wa kike Mwana wa kike Mwana wa kike Trying to learn Swahili? 
Learn lightning fast with the Innovative Language 101 app. Download it now for free for the iPhone, iPad, or any Android device. And start speaking in minutes with this powerful language learning tool. What makes it so special? Get instant access to hundreds of fun and effective audio and video lessons. Enjoy learning with real lessons from real teachers. Master reading and grammar with comprehensive lesson notes. Perfect your pronunciation with line-by-line -line audio. Wow native Swahili speakers with cultural insights. Learn offline by downloading lessons to any device. Stay motivated as you watch your Swahili grow on your progress tracking dashboard. Stay up to date with instant notification of new lessons. Take lessons that are right for you, whether you're just getting started or already an advanced learner. Discover for yourself why millions of Innovative Language 101 app users are learning lightning fast. Download the Innovative Language 101 app for free right now. Pick your language. Sign up for a free lifetime account and start speaking from the very first lesson. Already a member? Simply download the Innovative Language 101 app for free. Pick your language and log in. Pick up your progress as the app knows where you left off. Getting on the fast track to fluency is that simple. The Innovative Language 101 app. Instant access to fun and effective Swahili lessons anywhere, anytime. It's Medina again on another lesson. This time we're going to look at the 20 words you will need for the beach. Everyone who comes to Kenya tries to come to the beach, I promise you. And you'll need this for the beach. Okay, let's get going. Miwani Ajua. Sunglasses. This really doesn't look like Miwani, but it's just an illustration. Miwani Ajua. He Miwani Ajua ni pesangapi. How much are these sunglasses? Ufuo wa bahari, beach. Kuja tutembe, kwenye ufuo wa bahari. Come, let us walk on the beach. Kuogelea, swimming. Easy. I don't know how to do it, but you know how to do it. Kuogelea ni moja wapo ya hobi zangu. Swimming is one of my hobbies. Jua. The sun. Leo, jua hii ni kali sana. Jua hii ni kali sana. Today, the sun is too hot. Ooh. Where do I go? Okay, the weather in Kenya and the seasons vary a lot with temperatures ranging from around, you can go from 15 to 30 degrees. 30 degrees is way, way hot, so you may need to Get something to protect yourself. Mti wa mtende. Palm tree. Hu mti wa mtende unakivuli mzuri sana. This palm tree has very good shade. You can enjoy it. Okay, actually in Kenya it's not that. In the coastal areas it's humid. But in some other places the shade under a tree when it's hot is the most amazing thing. Very relaxing thing to do. I know you can enjoy that. Get some of those trees around and just relax under them when the sun is shining hot. Koala Bahari, seashell. Napenda kuokota koaza bahari. I like collecting seashells. It can be a hobby. Try it out when you're at the coast of Kenya. Vazi la kuoga, swimsuit. Usisahau. Vazi la kuoga. Don't forget your swimsuit, please. To have fun, make sure you carry it with you. Bahari, ocean. He bahari ni maridadi sana leo. This ocean is very beautiful today. You like the view of the ocean in Mombasa when the sun is shining hot. It's so beautiful. You want to stay there. Forever. The scenery is bed taking and I bet you like it. Piki Piki la Majini. Jet ski. <laughs> Naogopa kuendesha Piki Piki la Majini. I fear riding on a jet ski. Literally, I do fear. Even if you go a number of people in the sea, I just don't want to try it out. Taweli ya Pwani. Beach towel. Nipe hiyo taweli yangu ya pwani tafadhali. 
Hand me my beach towel, please. Kitty Chapwani. Beach chair. Amenda kupumzika katika kiti chapwani. He has gone to rest on the beach chair. There are quite many beach chairs at the beach, and I think you can grab one for yourself to relax. Hope you do. Boma la mchanga. Sand castle. Eneo hili lina boma la mchanga. Moja tu. This area has only one sand castle. I remember in my childhood, one thing that took us, besides swimming or having fun at the sea, one thing that, one other thing that took us to the sea was making sandcastles. It was lots of fun. Kirimba, kula. Ninduka gani liko na kirimba hapa? Which shop has a kula around here? Mawimbi, tide. Napenda kuangalia mawimbi. I like watching tides a lot, like, for real, it's very relaxing. Rangi shaba, tan. Kuota jua kuna kupa rangi shaba. Basking in the sun gives you a tan. You got that experience? When I go with something on the sea and I come back with my hands tanned. Ogelea kwa chombo cha kupumulia. Snorkeling. Tuende kuogelea kwa chombo cha kupumulia. Let's go snorkeling. Snorkeling looks fun. I've never tried it before, but um, I think it looks fun. My friends tell me it looks fun. I don't know. Maybe I should try it out. Party party. Flip flop. Tafadhali va party party. Please, wear your flip flops. Party party comes from the mimicking sound of the sandals when you're walking. Party party. So it's easy to remember. Mafuta ya kukinga kwa jua. Sunscreen. Nisaidia na mafuta ya kukinga kwa jua. Yangu ya meisha. Help me with your sunscreen. Mine is finished. Suti la kogelea la bikini. Bikini. Suti la kogelea la bikini langu limeraruka. My bikini is torn. Oh, I'm worried. I need to get another one. Kifa cha kwelea. Flora. Nunulia mtoto kifa cha kuelea. Buy a flora for the baby. Today we looked at the 20 words you'll need for the beach. I am sure they'll be very helpful and during your visit to, to, to Kenya or any other places that has Swahili speakers. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also, if possible, visit us at SwahiliPod101.com for more exciting lessons. Bye-bye. I'm going for lunch. Thank <laughs> you. You've lost your wallet while riding on a bus. Hoping to get your wallet back, you go to look at a city map to try and locate the lost and found office of the bus company. Where is the lost and found office located? Where is the lost and found office located? The lost and found office is located on the south side of the city, number 12 on the map. Number 12 In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 Core Swahili Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. 
With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you have read the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access small example sentences, create your own flashcard desk, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is checker, laugh, checker, checker, laugh, wachumba. Walichekelea picha. The couple laughed at the picture. Wachumba walichekelea picha. Nitam. Delicious. Nitam. Nitamu. Delicious. Chakula hiki nikitam. This food is delicious. Chakula hiki ni kitamu. Maji. Water. Maji. Maji. Water. Waweza kunipa maji tafazari? Can I have some water please? Waweza kunipa maji tafadhali. Chai. Tea. Chai. Chai. Tea. Mwanamke huyu anakunywa chai. The woman is drinking tea. Mwanamke huyu anakunywa chai. Kahawa. Coffee. Kahawa. Kahawa. Coffee. Bilika la kahawa limeja kahawa. The coffee pot is full of coffee. Bilika la kahawa Limejaha kahawa. Pombe. Beer. Pombe. Pombe. Beer. Chupa ya pombe. Bottle of beer. Chupa ya pombe. Mvinyo. Wine. Mvinyo. Mvinyo. Wine. Mvinyo unamwaga kwa bila uri. Wine is being poured into the glass. Mvinyo unamwaga kwa Bila uri. Nyama ya ngombe. Beef. Nyama ya ngombe. Nyama ya ngombe. Beef. Chagua la leo siku ni nyama ya ngombe au kuku. Tonight's choices are beef or chicken. Chaguo la leo siku ni nyama ya ngombe au kuku. Nyama ya kuku. Chicken. Nyama ya kuku. Nyama ya kuku. Chicken. Sipendi ngozi ya kuku. I don't like chicken skin. Sipendi. Ngozi ya kuku. 
nyama ya nguruwe pork nyama ya nguruwe nyama ya nguruwe pork nyama ya nguruwe ni nyama inayopatikana kutoka kwa nguruwe pork is the meat from a pig nyama ya nguruwe ni nyama inayopatikana kutoka kwa nguruwe samaki fish samaki samaki fish Wajapani hula samaki kwa wingi Japanese people eat a lot of fish Wajapani hula samaki kwa wingi Nyama ya mbuzi lamb Nyama ya mbuzi Nyama ya mbuzi lamb Egemeo ya nyama ya mbuzi rack of lamb Egemeo ya nyama ya mbuzi Daktari Doctor Daktari Dakitari Doctor Daktari anapima papio la mgonjwa The doctor is taking the patient's pass Dakitari anapima papio la mgonjwa Afisa polisi Police officer Afisa polisi Afisa Polisi Police officer Kazi ya afisa polisi ni kulinda na kuhudumia umma The job of a police officer is to protect and save the public Kazi ya afisa polisi ni kulinda na kuhudumia umma Mwalimu Teacher Mwalimu Mwalimu Teacher Mwalimu anafunza wanafunzi darasani The teacher is teaching the kids in the classroom Mwalimu anafunza wanafunzi darasani Mfanyakazi Mproi Mfanyakazi Mfanyakazi Mproi Malupulupu ya mfanyakazi Mproi benefits Marupulupu ya mfanyakazi Jo Come Joe Joe o come Joe hapa come here Joe o hapa kuona see kuona kuona Si. Hawezi ona chochote bila miani yake. She cannot see anything without her glasses. Hawezi ona chochote bila miwani yake. Tengeneza. Make. Tengeneza. Tengeneza. Make. Mpishi hutengeneza kinywaji cha machungwa. The chef makes orange juice. Mpishi hutengeneza kinywaji cha 
machungwa kutumia use kutumia kutumia use tumia kamera ya tarakilishi use a webcam tumia kamera ya tarakilishi well done in this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words click the link in the description and sign up for free at swahilpod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation you also get example sentences custom flashcard decks and more learning resources see you next time kwaheri In this lesson, you will learn new vocabulary to increase your language skills. After learning the new words, you will be challenged with a quiz to review them. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. One shilling. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Five shillings. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Ten shillings. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Twenty shillings. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. 50 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. 100 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia moja. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. 200 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia mbili. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. 500 shillings note. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi mia tano. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. One thousand shillings note. Noti ya shilingi 
elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Noti ya shilingi elfu moja. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi kumi. Shilingi tano. Shilingi tano. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi hamsini. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miamoja. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miatano. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Noti ya shilingi miambili. Shilingi moja. Shilingi moja. Shilingi ishirini. Shilingi ishirini. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mume na mkeo wanatazama rasimu ya sakafu. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Na hili je, lina sebule nzuri na kubwa. Hmm, napenda sebule kubwa, lakini pia nataka nafasi ya kuegesha gari. Na tuone. Na hili je. Ndio. Hilo ni nzuri. Tuwaweza kwenda kuyona? Ngoja kidogo. Kabati lake si ni ndogo sana. Jambo njema. Hmm. Panaonekana hamna lile lililo timilifu. Ngoja, na hili je? Lina kila tunalohitaji, sivyo? Na kabati lake pia ni kubwa mno. Twende tukalitazame. Sawa. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Mume na mkeo wanatazama rasimu ya sakafu. Wanaenda kuona nyumba ipi? Na hili je, lina sebule nzuri na kubwa. Hmm, napenda sebule kubwa, lakini pia nataka nafasi ya kuegesha gari. Na tuone. 
na hili je Ndiyo. Hilo ni nzuri. Tuwaweza kwenda kuiona? Ngoja kidogo. Kabati lake si ni ndogo sana. Jambo njema. Hmm. Panaonekana hamna lile lililo timilifu. Ngoja na hili je. Lina kila tunalohitaji, sivyo? Na kabati lake pia ni kubwa mno. Twende tukalitazame. Sawa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Yeah, hello everyone. It's Medina here with you on Swahili Top Words. Today we're going to look at 10 must know autumn vocabulary. Autumn? Autumn. I, I don't know. That pronunciation is quite tricky, but whatever it is, autumn vocabulary. Yes, welcome and have fun. Fulana, fulana, sweater, fulana, sweater. Huwezi toka nje bila fulana. Huwezi toka nje bila fulana. You cannot go outdoors without a sweater. Yeah, that's a common voice from our mothers or perhaps your older brother, older sister, whoever it is. But when it is super cold, you don't want to get out without a sweater because you don't want to catch cold you know you know what it means catching a cold in that cold season please get yourself a sweater when it's autumn kuwa na mvua kuwa na mvua rainy kuwa na mvua rainy leo ni siku ya kuwa na mvua today is a rainy day oh yeah, today is a rainy day. We love rain, but not always, especially when you, when you want to go for a picnic. But you know what? Get yourself an umbrella. Or if you want to feel the, the test of rain, hmm, just go out. You know, actually, during my childhood memories, we'll never mind about rain. In fact, it was our favorite thing. Of course, not for the very heavy rain. That one, you might get sick. But when it rains, we'll jump outside and we're like, yeah, it's raining. We shout to the rain as if it has ears to listen. And you know what? Out there, the smell of soil was so good. I miss those days because everywhere where I am, it's stomach. You can't feel the taste, the natural taste. Anyway, wherever you are, take care. Take care. Get your umbrella whenever you're going outside. Kuwana upepo. Kuwa na upepo. Windy. Kuwa na upepo. Windy. Hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo. Hali ya anga leo ni kuwa na upepo. Today's weather is windy. <gasps> you know what? I think I got a practical definition of windy when I came to Japan. I'm currently living in Japan and and there's what we call typhoon. I never even knew about it <laughs> when I was young. I mean, it, it's quite hilarious, but it's the truth. Typhoon almost carried me away. I was like, what kind of wind is this? I mean, that was windy for me. Of course, we have, it's windy in Kenya, and sometimes it can be really terrible. It carries away rooftops and all that. But, you know, it's, it's not so much like typhoon. Probably now we can differentiate between what windy is and typhoon is. Do you get the difference? I don't know. Try and figure it out by yourself. Kuna baridi. Kuna baridi. Cool. Kuna baridi. Cool. Kama kuna baridi, woge na majimoto. Kama kuna baridi, woge na majimoto. When it is cool, you should shower with hot water. I mean, that was so like serious to think of, of, of showering with hot water when it's cool. I remember in my boarding school, it was in a forested area and it was always cold. But guess what? We will shower with cold water, super cold, almost like ice. And you will not like it. But you know what? You get out of there shivering. But when you get in class, you're very alert. So it depends on you what you do. But you know what? Take care of your health in whichever case. Demani, demani, autumn. Demani, autumn. 
Demani hii nitanunua kifaa cha joto. Demani hii nitanunua kifaa cha joto. This autumn I will buy a heater. Yes, you can but not necessarily in Kenya. It's way different. If you get a heater, imagine you'll be wasting money, you know. Save it because in Kenya the weather's are, are really good, consistent throughout the year. It's never that super cold like the winter cold in Japan or, or other places, you know. We don't we don't get to see snow. I mean, once in a while a miracle happens, you know. That's what I mean. But uh, you don't have to buy a heater. You can heat your house in a different way. I mean, yeah, but really not a heater. That will be too much. Yeah, for real, you, you really don't have to buy a heater. It's not that cold for a heater. You can find different other means of heating your house, but not necessarily with a heater. Save that money, yo! Halloween. 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 The Day of Monsters. Halloween. It's just Halloween in Swahili. We don't have any... We haven't come up with a better Swahili word. Probably Swahili words cannot just fit that word, you know? I'm not sure, but uh, mm, probably. Halloween. Halloween. Halloween linakuja jumalijalo. Halloween linakuja jumalijalo. Halloween is coming up next week. Yeah, a day of monsters and ghosts. I'm freaking out already because I just don't like those things. Anyway, Halloween. Halloween is, is being introduced in Kenya and people are adopting it slowly by slowly. But it's, it's not so famous and people are not really, really into it as I see it here. Hmm, yeah. Because, you know, I, I think just as 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 me or as i am or whichever way you want to put it kenyans really are not into ghosts and how and and blood shedding and all that it's kind of freaking right don't you think so anyway upon you anyone who wants to celebrate halloween can call their friends and they have halloween party or something but it's not so commercial in as much as people are now adopting it so we have what we call anniversaries you know anniversaries whereby you pay respect for the living dead or for your ancestors. And during this time, especially if it was a recent death, after a year, people come together, like families and relatives. You come together and you celebrate this person. It's a celebration, actually, because there's a lot of eating, a lot of praying, a lot of dancing. Dancing? Yeah, there's a lot of dancing and music. And in some places, yes, there is just to come together and, and celebrate the living dead or perhaps your ancestors. Some people do this annually. Some people do not do it. So it depends with your family and your culture. Mboza. Mboza. Chestnut. Mboza. Chestnut. Ile pale dio mboza. Ile pale dio mboza. There is the chestnut. Chestnuts are not quite common in Kenya. Shati la mikono mirefu. Shati la mikono mirefu. Long sleeved shirt. Shati la mikono mirefu. Long sleeved shirt. Duka gani linauza shati la mikono mirefu? Duka gani linauza shati la mikono mirefu? Which shop sells long sleeved shirts? I don't remember anything about long sleeve shirts. <laughs> it's just a cloth like any other, right? Especially in Kenya, fashion cuts across any weather. We put on long sleeve shirt when it's super hot. We put on long sleeve shirt when it's cold. I mean, long sleeve shirt, especially when you're going to work, it's kind of one of the official wear. So it cuts across every weather and season. Yeah, you can carry one or two or seven to Kenya while you're there. It suits any season. Of course, you also want to be casual, right? When you're going to safari parks or whatever, I think you want you don't want to look really official, you know. I mean, it's it's your choice, but um, casual wear will also do. Matawi yanayoanguka. Matawi yanayoanguka. Falling leaves. Matawi yanayoanguka. Falling leaves. The money 
ni msimu unaohusishwa na matawi yanayoanguka. Demani ni msimu unaohusishwa na matawi yanayoanguka. Autumn is the season associated with falling leaves. Yeah, we have actually in Kenya we have different kinds of trees that shed leaves during the autumn season. And yeah, I remember those experiences. At school we would pile many sacks of leaves in the name of that. But you know what? We never used to throw them. We had a big compost pit where we would pile them and they will stay there for manure. So every year we didn't buy manure. That was clever of us. But you have something, a manure, organic, to use in our farms. And back in my hometown, of course, I will clean up, you know. Those are some of the seasons that, you know, you'll not like because you'll end up, after you clean up, immediately after two minutes, you see lots of leaves piling again. And again, you have to clean up and clean up and clean up and clean up until the autumn season is over. But you know, just brings back memories, beautiful memories. I miss those days. Jani, Jani, leaf. Jani, leaf. Actually, this is my hand, but it's not a leaf, but it just gives you an expression of how a leaf looks like. Does it have this? I mean, leaves look differently. Jani, leaf. Majani, yanazidi kuanguka. Majani, yanazidi kuanguka. Leaves are continuously falling. They are continuously falling. You know, we had this tree. It was so huge. It was right in front of our, of our, I mean, a little bit distance from my our main house. But it was in the compound, of course. And it was really big. And it had very huge leaves. And you know what? During the autumn season, those leaves would continuously fall. And you know what? We had to continuously clean up. Every moment you clean up this side, the other side is already full of leaves. Like it was, wow, why? I was always wishing that, oh, let the autumn season pass just because of that. But you know what? I like the flowers around. So hmm. you have this that is good and you have that that is not really good, but it has to happen. So you've got to balance and compromise. Ah, I lived with that. I mean, it brings black childhood memories and I'm loving it. Yeah, things come to an end, and we've actually come to the end of this lesson. Ten must know autumn vocabulary. I'm sure when you visit Kenya, you'll carry these vocabularies with you, and you'll feel comfortable, I promise you. Now, you know what? We technically don't have autumn in Kenya. I mean, I mean, season change, but you know, when you get the right definition of autumn, yeah, perhaps it doesn't really match with the seasons, the autumn the autumn season in Kenya. How about your country? We would like to know your comments. Please visit us um, at swahilipod101.com to learn more Swahili. And we would like to hear your comment. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Bye. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tunasiagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki? Ndiyo, tuna chupa kidogo hapa. Vyema, hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. Sawa sawa, nadhania tuko sawa. Asante.
anaenda kununua nini? Mwanamume anaongea na bibi yake katika simu. Anaenda kununua nini? Eti naelekea nyumbani sasa. Sawa. Unaweza kununua kitu kwa njia yako nyumbani? Ndivyo. Ungelipenda ninunue nini? Tunahitaji maziwa na mkate ya kiamsha kinywa ya kesho. Maziwa na mkate nimezipata. Paketi ngapi za maziwa? Moja itatosha. Sawa. Jambo lingine lolote? Sekunde. Wacha niangalie kama tunasiagi. Ndio, tunao. Ndivyo, tuna pombe yoyote iliyobaki? Ndiyo, tunachupa kidogo hapa. Vyema, hatuhitaji kununua yeyote sasa hivi. Sawa sawa, nadhania tuko sawa. Asante. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. Today, we'll learn conversational phrases about occupations. After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your job and ask what somebody does for a living. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, Click the link in the description to download your occupation PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni msani. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Wewe hufanya nini? What do you do? Mimi ni msani. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, What do you do? That's, Wewe hufanya nini? Listen to it again. Wewe hufanya nini? Wewe Hufanya nini? Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Mimi ni? Your occupation. I'm a, an, your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Mi, mi, ni, m, sa, ni. Mimi ni msani. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Askari. Askari. Teacher. Mwalimu. Mwalimu. Doctor. Daktari. Daktari. Engineer. Mhandisi. Mhandisi. Now, listen to some examples. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mwalimu. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni daktari. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mhandisi. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Wewe hufanya nini? 
Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say doctor? Naktari. Naktari. Say, I'm a doctor. Mimi ni daktari. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni daktari. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Mwalimu. Mwalimu. Say, I'm a teacher. Mimi ni mwalimu. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mwalimu. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Mhandisi. Mhandisi. Say, I'm an engineer. Mimi ni mhandisi. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Wewe hufanya nini? Mimi ni mhandisi. Well done! In this lesson, you learn new occupation-related vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life. You are now able to talk about your job like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell me about your job. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu printer katika afisi. Printer mzee uko wapi? Tuweke wapi printer mpya? Hmm. Nadhani tupaweke palipo printer mzee. Lakini ule mzee bado unafanya kazi. Tutaendelea kuutumia. Sawa. Hivyo basi hatuwezi kuweka ule mpya hapo. Ni mbaya sana. Ingekuwa vyema kuwa na printer mpya katika rafu ya vitabu iliyo karibu na mlango. Lakini kuna nafasi ya printer moja pekee. Sawa. Nadhani tuweke katika sehemu ile nyingine ya nyumba. Sawa. Unaonaje ikiwa karibu na dirisha? Ni suluhisho nzuri pia. Printer mzee uko wapi? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea kuhusu printer katika afisi. Printer mzee uko wapi? Tuweke wapi printer mpya? Hmm. Nadhani tupaweke palipo printer mzee. Lakini ule mzee bado unafanya kazi. Tutaendelea kuutumia. Sawa. Hivyo basi hatuwezi kuweka ule mpya hapo. Ni mbaya sana. Ingekuwa vyema kuwa na printer mpya katika rafu ya vitabu iliyo karibu na mlango. Lakini kuna nafasi ya printer moja pekee. Sawa. Nadhani tuweke katika sehemu ile nyingine ya nyumba. Sawa. Unaonaje ikiwa karibu na dirisha? 
ni suluhisho nzuri pia. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101, Swahili Top Pod. Today, we are going to look at 10 questions you should know. Welcome and have fun. Jina lako ni nani? Jina lako ni nani? What's your name? To answer that, you'll say, Jina langu ni Medina. If you're Juma, you'll say, Jina langu ni Juma. My name is Juma. Uhali gani? Uhali gani? How are you? To answer that, you'll say, Njema, I'm fine. Or fine? Uhali gani fine? I'm fine. Ulizaliwa wapi? Ulizaliwa wapi? Where are you from? To answer that, I'll give the name of my country. Kenya. Ulizaliwa wapi? Kenya. If you're born in the United States, you'll say, America. Ulizaliwa wapi? America. Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? When is your birthday? To answer that, you'll say, Siku yangu ya kuzaliwa ni Aprili tarehe tatu. My birthday is April 3rd. Unaishi wapi? Unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Ninaishi Nairobi. I live in Nairobi. Nairobi is quite a big place. Actually, it's a province in itself. So you won't say you're living in the whole Nairobi. We have to be specific. So if you live in Langata, you will say, Ninaishi Langata. That is when we will assume you're in Nairobi and you're talking within people in Nairobi. They'll understand where Langata is. But if you're out of Nairobi, you'll say, Naishi Nairobi Langata, to just be specific. Unafanya kazi wapi? Unafanya kazi wapi? Where do you work? To answer this, you'll say, Jijini Mombasa. Again, Jijini Mombasa. Mombasa is the name of the place. Jijini means town. So if you're working in Kisumu, you'll say, Jijini Kisumu. Just to be specific, I work in Mombasa. I work in Kisumu. Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying, katika swahilipod101.com From swahilipod101.com J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? J, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, ndio napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you'll like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali. Ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour. White corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now, you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umesha waikuwa Kenya? Umesha waikuwa Kenya? Have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared. And it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. He unauza pesa ngapi? He unauza pesa ngapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price. So, you can keep changing that and say, shilingi hamsini za Kenya. 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. 
So having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Yeah, we're done. Thank you so much for keeping up with me until the end of this lesson. Do you remember all those questions? They're very handy and I really recommend that you have them at your fingertips whenever you visit Kenya. Now, if you liked our lesson, do not forget to give us a thumbs up down there and leave your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lesson. See you next time. Kwa heri tuonane. Bye. Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, how's your mother? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about well-being and ask how someone is doing. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Conversation About Family Wellbeing PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Habari ya mama yako. Ako sawa. Once more with the English translation. Habari ya mama yako. How's your mother? Ako sawa. She's fine. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, how's your mother? That's... Habari ya mama yako. Listen to it again. Habari ya mama yako. Habari ya mama yako. Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Ako. State of well-being. But it translates as, she is state of well-being, in English. For example, she's fine. Ako sawa. Ako sawa. Here are a few expressions related to well-being that you can use with this pattern. Great. Bora. Bora. Fine. Sawa. Sawa. So-so. Kabisa, kabisa. Kabisa, kabisa. Bad. Mbaya, mbaya. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Habari ya mama yako. Ako bora. Habari ya mama yako. Ako kabisa kabisa. Habari ya mama yako. Ako mbaya. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, how's your mother? Habari ya mama yako. Imagine she's great. Do you remember how to say great? Bora. Bora. Say, she's great. Ako bora. Now, answer the question saying she's great. Habari ya mama yako. Ako bora. Now imagine she's so-so. 
Do you remember how to say so-so? Cabisa, cabisa. Cabisa, cabisa. Say, she's so-so. Ako, cabisa, cabisa. Now, answer the question saying, she's so-so. Habari ya mama yako. Ako, kabisa, kabisa. Now imagine she's bad. Do you remember how to say bad? Mbaya. Mbaya. Say, she's bad. Ako, mbaya. Now answer the question saying she's bad. Habari ya mama yako. Ako mbaya. In this lesson, you learn new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk about well-being. You're now able to talk about how someone is feeling like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell me how you are today. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Swahili. Hi everybody, my name is Beatrice. Welcome to the 800 core Swahili words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Swahili. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we will include the previous lessons at the end. So. After you have read the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in the previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important part of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at swahilipod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard depth, and finally, master Swahili. Okay, let's get started. First is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Naweza ongea na Anna. Hello. Can I speak to Anna? Jumbo. Naweza ongea na Anna. Niwe radhi. Excuse me. Niwe radhi. Niwe radhi. Excuse me. Niwe radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako. Excuse me. May I please check your luggage? Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako. Kumladhi. I'm sorry. Kumladhi. Kumladhi. I'm sorry. Kumladhi. Nimechelewa. I'm sorry, I'm late. Kunlavi ni mechelewa. Lala salama. Good night. Lala salama. Lala salama. Good night. Nitaondoka sasa. Lala salama. I'll go now. Good night. Nitaondoka sasa. Lala salama. 
Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana nawe. Rehema. Nice to meet you, Rehema. Nina furaha kukutana nawe Rehema. Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani? Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani mzee Juma? How are you Mr. Juma? Habari gani mzee Juma? Ndio. Yes. Ndio. Ndio. Yes. Ndio, najua. Yes, I know. Ndio, najua. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana. No. Hapana, sijafika, lakini niko njiani. No, I've not yet arrived, but I'm on the way. Hapana, sijafika, lakini niko njiani. Asante. Thank you. Asante. Asante. Thank you. Asante, lakini sija kuagiza hii. Thank you, but I didn't order this. Asante, lakini sija kuagiza hii. Mimi ni? I am. Mimi ni? Mimi ni? I am. Mimi ni Maria. I am Maria. Mimi ni Maria. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri, tutaonana jioni. Goodbye. See you in the evening. Kwa heri tutaonana jioni. Mbaya. Bad. Mbaya. Mbaya. Bad. Mwanamume ni mbaya. The man is bad. Mwanamume ni mbaya. Nzuri. Good. Nzuri. Nzuri. Good. Mboga ni nzuri kwa mwili wako. Vegetables are good for you. Mboga ni nzuri kwa mwili wako. Rembo. Pretty. Rembo. Rembo. Pretty. Nguo yako ni rembo sana. Your dress is very pretty. Nguo yako ni rembo sana. Sawijika. Ugly. Sawijika. Sawijika. Ugly. 
Mbwa yule amesawijika mno. That is a very ugly dog. Mbwa yule amesawijika mno. Rahisi. Easy. Rahisi. Rahisi. Easy. Bidha yao ni mpya ni maridadi na rahisi kutumia. Their new product is really elegant and easy to use. Bidha yao mpya ni maridadi na rahisi kutumia. Ngumu. Difficult. Ngumu. Ngumu. Difficult. Hisabati ni ngumu. Mathematics is difficult. Hisabati ni ngumu. Karibu. Near. Karibu. Karibu. Near. Naishi karibu na chuo kikuu. I live near the university. Naishi karibu na chuo kikuu. Mbali. Fa. Mbali. Mba li. Fa. Mwanamke anatazama kitu kilicho mbali zaid. The woman is looking at something far away. Mwanamke anatazama kitu kilicho mbali zaid. Ndogo small. Ndogo. Ndo go small. Ndogo sana. Very small. Ndogo sana. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at swailpod101.com to get access to full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversation. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Kwaheri! How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke na mwanamume wanatazama picha. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Hili ni picha ya timu ya kandanda alimu mwanao. Sivyo? Mwanao ni yupi? Huyu. Ala? Ni huyu mrefu. Ndiyo, hata ni mrefu kunishinda. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Mwanamke na mwanamume wanatazama picha. Ni picha gani wanalotazama? Hili ni picha ya timu ya kandanda alimu mwanao. Sivyo? Mwanao ni yupi? Huyu. Ala? Ni huyu mrefu. Ndiyo. Hata ni mrefu kunishinda. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready?
mwanamke anaandaa nafasi kwenye hoteli. Anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Hoteli ya pande ya kisiwa ya ni Seaside. Naweza kukusaidiaje? Ningelipenda kuishi usiku mmoja katika mwezi wa Septemba tarehe 22. Sawa. Usiku mmoja kutoka mwezi wa Septemba 22. Watu wangapi? Wawili. Ungelipenda chumba cha kuvuta au sio cha kuvuta sigara? Sio cha kuvuta. Chumba kisicho cha kuvuta siku hiyo ni kwenye sehemu ya kutazama mlima. Ni sawa kwako? Vema, nilikuwa natarajia kupata sehemu ya kutizama kisiwa. Niwie radhi, lakini chumba kilichobaki sehemu hiyo ni ya kuvuta sigara. Naelewa. Kunayo chumba kisicho cha kuvuta sigara sehemu hii katika mwezi Septemba 23. Ndio, kunayo. Sawa. Tutaishi kuanzia tarehe 23. Anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Mwanamke anaandaa nafasi kwenye hoteli. Anaenda kuishi katika chumba gani? Hoteli ya pande ya kisiwa ya ni Seaside. Naweza kukusaidiaje? Ningelipenda kuishi usiku mmoja katika mwezi wa Septemba tarehe 22. Sawa. Usiku mmoja kutoka mwezi wa Septemba 22. Watu wangapi? Wawili. Ungelipenda chumba cha kuvuta au sio cha kuvuta sigara? Sio cha kuvuta. Chumba kisicho cha kuvuta siku hiyo ni kwenye sehemu ya kutazama mlima. Ni sawa kwako? Vema, nilikuwa natarajia kupata sehemu ya kutizama kisiwa. Niwie radhi, lakini chumba kilichobaki sehemu hiyo ni ya kuvuta sigara. Naelewa. Kunayo chumba kisicho cha kuvuta sigara sehemu hii katika mwezi Septemba 23. Ndio, kunayo. Sawa, tutaishi kuanzia tarehe 23. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mvulana anasoma kutoka kwa shajara lake. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Hali ya anga ilikuwa mzuri sana leo. Nilienda kuogelea alasiri hii katika bwao la kuogelea. Pia nilienda kwenye sinema jioni na nilisoma asubuhi mzima. Leo haikuwa siku mbaya. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Mvulana anasoma kutoka kwa shajara lake. Nini cha kwanza alichokifanya mvulana huyu leo? Hali ya anga ilikuwa mzuri sana leo. Nilienda kuogelea alasiri hii katika bwao la kuogelea. Pia nilienda kwenye sinema jioni na nilisoma asubuhi mzima. Leo haikuwa siku mbaya. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Love these lessons? Want more? You'll find the rest of our 3-minute lessons on the website. Sign up for your free lifetime account. You'll unlock the full course in seconds and learn how to read and write in Swahili. You also get tons of other audio and video lessons that will get you using the language from your very first lesson and teach you how to read, write, and speak. 
Plus, you'll get PDF lesson notes, cheat sheets, study tools, and much more. Click the link in the description below and sign up for your free lifetime account. Yes, welcome again. This is Medina. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Top words. Today, we are going to look at 10 hardest words to pronounce in Swahili. Badai, later. Badai, later. Badai. For example, you can say, Tuonane badai. See you later. Tu onane baadai. Now, actually, I can understand why it's a little bit difficult word to pronounce because uh, looking back at my nephew, he was at that time around two, three years old. He had a very hard time saying baadai. He used to say badea, badea, which is quite different. But now he made it up. He's okay. He says badai. Changia to contribute. Changia to contribute. Changia. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. To contribute to a greater cause. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. Hapa Kenya, hakuna matata. There are no worries here in Kenya. Actually, there's a song that goes, Kenya inchi yetu, hakuna matata. Nchi ya kupendeza, hakuna matata. That means that in our country, there are no worries. It's a lovable country. There are no worries. Yeah, hakuna matata is quite a handy word to use. Actually, it's in a song, so just learn the song and you get the word. If you're a fan of Lion King movie, I'm sure you've heard about this phrase. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. The north part of the country is very dry. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. Kipupwe. Cool season. Kipupwe. Cool season. Kipupwe. What will pata homa wakati wa kipupwe? People catch flu during the cool season. What who pata homa wakati wa kipupwe? Mchungwa. Orange tree. Mchungwa. Orange tree. Mchungwa. Nimelala hapa. Chini ya mti wa mchungwa. I am lying here under an orange tree. Nimelala hapa. Chini ya mti wa mchungwa. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana. Nangangana kuwa wa kwanza. I'm striving to be the first one. Ngangana. Can you try saying it out? Nga. Nga na. Do you realize that you stick your tongue at the back upper part of your mouth and then the voice comes through your nose? Nga nga na. Hope you did it. Ngombe cow. Ngombe cow. Ngombe. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. These are two cows. Ngombe is similar like ngang, ngana, mean the way you stick the tongue behind and to the top of your mouth. But now you're using the o sound. You're trying to make the o sound. Try it again. Ngo, ngo, ngombe. Hope you made it. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka. Kutupa takataka, to empty the trash. Kutupa takataka. Now, takataka can be used in different ways. For example, if someone says takataka, it will mean something really bad or wasteful or something that is annoying. If someone says, wewe ni takataka, it means you're wasteful or you're a waste. So you can use it different ways. But you know what? 
don't use it to your friend or someone. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's not a good word to use, in other words. So be careful when you use it. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa. Matajiri wana nyanyasa maskini. The rich oppress the poor. Matajiri wana nyanyasa maskini. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Was it a long way to learn the top hardest word to pronounce in Swahili? Did you get it right to say ngangana and ngombe? If you did, and if you liked our videos, we'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. And please, don't forget to visit our website, swahilipod101.com, for more lessons. See you! Bye! Kwaheri! Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anaripoti katika mkutano kuhusu nyendo za mauzo ya kampuni yake. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Tafadhali tazama kijikaratasi. Chati ya kushoto inaonesha mauzo ya kampuni yetu katika miaka tatu iliyopita na utabiri wa mauzo katika mwaka huu. Chati ya kulia inaonesha mauzo katika miezi hadi mwezi wa Oktoba wa mwaka huu. Sasa tafadhali tazama chati ya kushoto. Inaonyesha vile mazao ilikuwa ikiongezeka kwa utaratibu katika miaka tatu iliyopita. Tukiweza kupandisha mauzo yetu, mauzo kwa jumla ya mwaka huu utaonyesha kuongezeka kutoka mwaka jana. Aidha tazama chati ya pili. Inaonesha kuwa kampeni tulizofanya Aprili na Agosti zilikuwa za manufaa. Naelewa. Lakini mauzo yalipungua Mei na Septemba tukifuatilia makampeni. Ndio. Lakini matukio kama haya hayawezi kuepukika. Natarajia mauzo ya kila mwaka katika mwaka huu kupanda ukilinganishwa na mwaka jana, ijapokuwa tutazidi kuongeza mauzo yetu. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Mwanamume anaripoti katika mkutano kuhusu nyendo za mauzo ya kampuni yake. Anatumia chati gani kati ya hizi mbili katika hotuba yake? Tafadhali tazama kijikaratasi. Chati ya kushoto inaonesha mauzo ya kampuni yetu katika miaka tatu iliyopita na utabiri wa mauzo katika mwaka huu. Chati ya kulia inaonesha mauzo katika miezi hadi mwezi wa Oktoba wa mwaka huu. Sasa tafadhali tazama chati ya kushoto. Inaonyesha vile mazao ilikuwa ikiongezeka kwa utaratibu katika miaka tatu iliyopita. Tukiweza kupandisha mauzo yetu, mauzo kwa jumla ya mwaka huu utaonyesha kuongezeka kutoka mwaka jana. Aidha tazama chati ya pili. Inaonesha kuwa kampeni tulizofanya Aprili na Agosti zilikuwa za manufaa. Naelewa. Lakini mauzo yalipungua Mei na Septemba tukifuatilia makampeni. Ndio. Lakini matukio kama haya hayawezi kuepukika. Natarajia mauzo ya kila mwaka katika mwaka huu kupanda ukilinganishwa na mwaka jana ijapokuwa tutazidi kuongeza mauzo yetu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You are at a bus terminal where you've just bought a long distance ticket. 
Which row and seat number are you in? Which row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in the eighth row in seat C. Safulanane kiticha. Okay, welcome again. It's Medina on Swahili Top Words. Today we're going to look at something that may be fun, I would say. Not for everyone though, but we're going to have fun in this lesson. 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Let us psych up our attitude and let's get going. Mfuko. Mfuko. Backpack. Mfuko. Backpack. Huo ni mfuko wangu. Huo ni mfuko wangu. That is my backpack. Yes. I'm ready to go to school. That is my backpack. Mwenzangu darasani. Mwenzangu darasani. Classmate. Mwenzangu darasani. Classmate. Juma. Ni mwenzangu darasani. Juma ni mwenzangu darasani. Juma is my classmate. Did I have Juma as a classmate? Not really, but uh, I had many classmates. I can't remember, but I have good memories of all of you. The fun guys, the fun ladies. I miss all of you. And my dedication for this lesson to you, my classmates. Kazia Ziada. Kazi ya ziada. Homework. Kazi ya ziada. Homework. Nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa. Nafanya kazi ya ziada sasa. I am doing my homework now. Ask me why. I am late. I'm running late. The deadline is in an hour's time and I have a lot to do. I am hurrying and... So nervous. Anyone identifies with my experience? You should get things going early. Mtihani. Mtihani. Exam. Mtihani. Exam. Tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo. Tunafanya mtihani wiki ijayo. We are sitting for exams next week oh time is running time is running i feel like i haven't done enough for that exam only if they could suspend it i'll be so happy but you know what i can't help it but i got to read i got to read oh majira ya likizo majira ya likizo summer break Majira ya likizo. Summer break. Majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo. Majira ya likizo nitapumzika kutoka kwa masomo. During summer break, I will take a rest from studies. Anyone as happy as I am? Yeah, and summer break is even longer. What are you going to do? I am so happy. But you know what? Don't forget to Get a book and read, even some novel or something like that. You know, studies never end. But I know relaxing is the point there. Relax and take advantage of it. Shule. Shule. School. Shule. School. Shule yetu inaitwa Bryban. Shule yetu inaitwa Bryban. Our school is called Bryban. 
kind of fancy name, right? <laughs> Tell me the name of your school. We want to hear it. Some of our school names are in our mother tongues. I would like to hear those, especially. Bryban is an international school in Nairobi, and it stretches to other neighboring countries like Tanzania. It offers British or international curriculum. You can feel comfortable to visit Bryban. And if you want to relocate to Kenya, <laughs> why not think about joining Bryban or something? I mean, it's a really cool school. Really cool. You can try it and go for a walk. Yeah, you can try an open campus actually and, and just to, to, to figure out how the school is. I wish you luck. Soma. Soma. To study. Soma. To study. Tunasoma masomo nane kwa siku. Tunasoma masomo nane. Nane kwa siku. We study eight lessons per day. Eight lessons per day. Yeah, I know. I have those experiences. But now I only have four lessons. And sometimes I am free. I enjoy my world here. Persevere. Soon you'll come on my side. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of school. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of class. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. Ni siku ya kwanza ya darasa. It's the first day of class. How do you feel on your first day of class? Are you excited to go see your friends, meet your teachers, get in that class? Hmm, the first day of class for me, do I even remember the feeling? Yeah, usually I'm kind of nervous because I'm like, oh, those homeworks are coming back again. No more rest for like three months or so. But I'm always excited to listen to my teachers and their insights and to have fun with my friends. Tuko katika darasa moja. Tuko katika darasa moja. We are in the same class. Tuko katika darasa moja. We are in the same class. How does it feel to meet your long-time friend after so many years in the same class? Perhaps you had not met for some years and then in the university on your first year, you come and you meet each other. I can't imagine the excitement, but for me, I'll be so, so excited. You'll notice that in this sentence, there's an interjection mark. Tuko katika darasa moja. Right? It, it's, it's a surprise. Perhaps meeting someone after a long time, you know? So it comes with that kind of excitement, the interjections, like a surprise thing. Actually, I think, I think in this sentence, we tend to express our emotions. So towards the end, you kind of raise your voice a little bit. Tuko katika darasa moja. You know, there's some kind of an emphasis towards the end, just to show the surprise. J, unachukua madarasa gani? J, unachukua madarasa gani? What classes are you taking? J, unachukua madarasa gani? What classes are you taking? I know sometimes it could be tricky to know what classes you want to take, especially when you're new to these things, you know? <laughs> but uh, I remember my my favorite class was of philosophy and psychology. I just liked the insights and the way our teachers would analyze facts. I don't know whether they were facts, but theories, you know, getting all these things together. It was really fun. What is your favorite subject? Please write to us on your comments. We'd we'll love to hear what you say. Thank you for listening. That's the end of our lesson today. I hope you got some facts or ideas on how to survive back to school. And we'd like to hear from you on how you survive back at school or how you're surviving back at school. Please write them down there on our comments section. And do not forget to subscribe. Please visit our website, swahilipod101.com for more lessons and exciting, more fun lessons. Thank you so much. See you. Bye.
Yes, welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Again, it's Medina with you. Now, today we are going to do something really special. We are going to talk about 10 words you never want to hear. No, don't say them on my ears. You know, something like that. Do you have that experience? Now, follow me and let's have fun. J, umongeza uzito hivi karibuni. J, umeongeza uzito hivi karibuni. Have you gained weight recently? Actually, in Kenya, adding weight is not really a big issue because people think the bigger you are in mass, <laughs> the wealthier you are or the richer you are. So there's nothing really bad about adding weight when you compare it with other countries like probably Japan or the States where you may get hard when someone talks about your weight. So feel free in Kenya. The only problem comes in when you're really cutting weight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the opposite. If you're really cutting weight, yeah, people will be asking you, oh, what's happening, you know? What, what's happening? Don't you have food? Or are you stressed? So there are those kind of cultural differences. Una nyuele ya rangi jivu. Una nyuele ya rangi jivu. You have gray hair. You know, you know, people have a difficult time accepting the fact that they are growing old. Yet it's a paradox of life, right? You're celebrating your birthday, but at the same time, you're growing old. Now, when you're growing old, it, it reaches a point when you're growing gray hair, right? And it's, it's evident. You cannot hide it unless you're coloring your hair. Now, in, in Kenya, really, you don't want to tell someone that they're growing gray hair. You better say it with your friends about somebody. But, you know, that will be gossiping. So I don't really recommend it. But uh, usually, you see the gray hair and keep it inside your heart. You appreciate the fact that, yeah, someone is growing and you keep it at that. Nilikweleza hivyo. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so. Actually, when you say it naturally, it comes out in a kind of arrogant way. Let's try it in Swahili. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so, you know. This is someone who kind of warned you beforehand that, uh, do not go that way, then unfortunately, I mean, at that time it's not really unfortunate, but you know, you did it and then there are those kind of consequences or circumstances, I mean, things that happen that are not really good. Then you come back and you know, your friend who warned you says on your face, I told you so. You don't want to hear that at that moment, especially when things have gone bad, you know. Ume futwa kazi. Ume Futwa kazi. You're fired. You know, this phrase, when someone is firing you, sometimes they say it in a polite way, right? Umefutwa kazi. Not to make you feel like, okay, oh, the world is ending. But there are those ones who come literally and say, Umefutwa kazi. You know what I mean? Like, you're fired. Like, literally. It's like, fire is coming on its way right there and then, and you feel like hell is burning loose. But, but you know what? It's, it's one phrase that we do not really want to hear and neither do we want to tell. Imagine someone is fired. I mean, I have friends who have been fired and they will never want to tell. You'll just see by yourself. You'll not see them get, getting out of the house and you're like, oh, what happened? You don't even want to go ask, you know? You're afraid. So you ask the neighbors, you hear from the neighbor that, oh, I'm a futwa kazi, which is kind of very sad. It's not a phrase that you want to hear. Not from your good friend either, right? Sio wewe ni mimi. Sio wewe ni mimi. It's not you. It's me. You know, this is one of the common phrases we hear when people are breaking up. Usually someone says this to take responsibility of the situation, like the breaking up. It sounds like polite, but it's like a cliche nowadays and it's not a fun word to say. Sio wewe ni mimi. Hope you never meet this word. <laughs> I wish you luck. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been failed. Okay, let us imagine your your 
looking for a job, like, yes, seriously. And, uh, and honestly, this is seriously in Kenya because we have a pool of undergraduates who are looking for jobs every day, you know? You actually advertise for one position like this and you find like more than 1,000 applicants. You're like, okay, okay, well, how, how, how should I prove myself to be smart? And you know, it's not like you've applied for one job, you've applied for quite a number of jobs and this is the same message they send you. It's quite frustrating. You don't want to hear it. Anyway, if you're someone looking for a job, I am praying for you. Do not give up though. Keep going, keep fighting. That's what we were meant for. Tuwaone watu wengine. Tuwaone watu wengine. We shall see other people. Now, this is a sad phrase in itself. Already, like, it's an explanation in itself. Someone is breaking up with you and with that arrogance, like, oh, let's go see other people, you know? It's like he already has many other options. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you're just one of them and you're like, oh, he's giving up on you to try the other options. It's quite sad though, right? It's quite sad. And like previously, I hope this never comes your way. But the bright side is you may end up getting someone who will treat you better than the person who has left you. So never give up hope. Sina pesayako leo. Sina pesayako Leo, I don't have your money today. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm laughing, but it, it's quite serious and it's quite a common phrase I hear quite from a lot of my friends. You know, when you're borrowing, when you're lending money, you should lend the amount you know you're willing to lose. <laughs> That's what my mother tells me every time. Because, yeah, you lend this money and you go asking for it and the person says, I don't have your money today. And you know, you go back tomorrow and it's another today. So those two days sometimes never come to an end. So whenever you're lending money, just be careful. Be careful how much you're lending and to who. Once beaten, twice shy. So if you're lending money to the same person who says that I don't have my, your money today, huh, you, you have to think again. I wish you luck in this. Ina paswa tuonge. Ina paswa tuonge. We need to talk. For me, for me, this is one of the phrases that are for real. I, I never want to hear. And when, I, when it gets into my ears, I'm like, oh, this trouble. I get so tensed up. I get so uncomfortable. And I just want to get out of it. I want to ask the person, okay, let's do it now so that we end it right now. I don't know about you. Please tell us your feelings at the comment sections later. We'd like to hear what you say. Nataka sikuza kumzika toka kazini. Nataka siku za kupumzika kutoka kazini. I want days off. Now, this is one of the words you don't want to hear when it's busy in the office. <laughs> you know, it makes you imagine like, oh, why, are you, why do you want days off when it's actually peak time, you know? We have so many clients coming in, then you want days off. Are you running away from work? You know, I think you, you may relate to this if you're in a busy I um, mean, work area, you're a manager or something like that, you know. It's one word you never want to hear. Yes, we have come to the end of 10 phrases you never want to hear. Yes, I totally agree. Some of these ones, seriously, I never want to hear. If I know it's coming, I literally run away. Yes, like I'm, I'm avoiding that person, you know. You know what I mean? You can relate to me and we would like to hear from you. Please write your comments down there and give us more examples of some of the phrases you never want to hear. And please do not forget to subscribe and visit our website, SwahiliPod101.com. See you! Kwaheri! You have a grey hair. Oh, when you're growing old kind of thingy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute when I think of it. Samahani Nilisa how yeah, this is a teacher and this is a student to a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which other what places this will apply. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is funny. You know, it makes me remember yeah. things that I've never thought about.
Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm. Hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. Atanunua dani gani? Mwanamume anatafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibie katika duka la shaufu. Atanunua dani gani? Naweza kukusaidia? Natafuta zawadi ya siku ya kuzaliwa ya bibi yangu. Unasifia gani? Nam, unaonaje dani hili hapa? Hmm. Linafanana ndefu kidogo. Na hivi hapa kuna moja na shamili la ua na moja lina roho. Natafuta kitu kilichosifika. Dani hili la lulu ni bei ngapi? Ni shilingi elf mia tatu. Hmm. Hilo ni bei gali sana. Nitachukua cha kwanza. Sawa, hapa upo. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? I say, nikusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? Mwanamume anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? I say, nikusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. You've just gotten off a bus at a bus terminal. Suddenly, a person hands you a leaflet. What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? What kind of deal is offered on this leaflet? The offer is buy two, get one free. 
nunua mbili pata moja bila malipo Hamjamboni mimi ni Medina Siku kuu ya mwaka mpya inasherehekewa mnamo tarehe moja Januari kila mwaka. Hii ni siku ambayo watu wengi utazama maisha yao ya mwaka uliopita na kutaka kubadilisha mazimio yao na kuwa na mtazamo mpya wa maisha. Funzo hili litatuangazia jinsi watu hujiburudisha pamoja na jamaa na marafiki. Je, ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha mielekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati gani wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Tutaonyesha jibu la swali hili mwishoni wa video hii. Watu hungoja siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kwa shauku kuu. Waamini huenda kanisani na kukesha huku wakingoja saa sita ya usiku kuwasili. Watu wengine huona heri kwenda kwa makao ya burudani na kujistaherehesha kwa kuimba na kupiga miziki. Saa sita ya usiku ikifika wao hupiga nduru, kurusha miele ya moto na kukaribisha mwaka mpya kwa hoi hoi na nderemo. Watu hutuma ujumbe mfupi kwa jamaa na marafiki na kukaribisha mwaka mpya. Walio katika mahali pa ibada huomba na kumshukuru Mungu. Asubuhi ifikapo, watu huanza kutayarisha mlo wa kipekee pamoja na vinywaji. Wao huwalika wageni na kuwapa burudani mrwa kabisa. Watu wengine upendelea kuchinja mbuzi na kupika chakula kama chapati, mkimo, pilao na vitoweo vya aina mbalimbali. Vinywaji hupatikana kwa wingi, nazo ni kama soda, maji ya matunda, pombe na vileo tofauti. Masai ya alasiri, watu wanapomaliza kula na kunywa wao huvalia mavazi mapya yanayopendeza na kuenda mahala pa kujistarehesha. Kwa mfano, wanaweza kwenda kuona wanyama wapori ama kuogelea huko pwani siku kuu kama hii hufanya utalii wa kinyumbani kufana sana siku hii watu hufanya matendo ya kutia fora kwa sababu wana imani ya kwamba wakiwa wazuri mwanzoni mwaka wao utakuwa wenye fanaka wao huanza na nia mpya na sasa nitawapa jibu la swali la hapo awali je ni wakati upi ambao watu wengi hupata muda wa kubadilisha mielekeo ya maisha yao? Ni wakati upi wa mwaka wazazi wengi huwanunulia watoto wao zawadi mpya? Watu wengi huchukulia siku hii kama wakati wa kwanza minendo mapya. Wazazi pia hutaka kuwafurahisha wanao wa wapendao kwa zawadi tofauti. Funzo hili lilikuwa je? Je, ulijifunza jambo lolote la kusisimua? Je, Nyinyi husherekea siku kuu ya mwaka mpya kama wa Kenya? Tuachie maoni yako katika swahili podwano1.com kisha tunane katika somo lifuatalo. Kwa heri. You are sitting on a bus that is about to arrive at the next bus stop. Suddenly, a signal lights up. What does the signal mean? What does the signal mean? The signal reads, please stay seated until the bus stops. Tafadhali, keti hadi basi lisimame. Hi everyone! 
Do you know the 1,000 most useful phrases in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them, so sit back, relax, and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Bafu liko wapi? Tafadhali. La haula. Nina hifadhi. Hii ni pesa ngapi? Hili ni nini? Asante. Kweli? Unaweza kunipunguzia bei? Hiyo wifi ni bure. Ningeweza kupata cheki? Je, una mapendekezo yoyote? Naweza kina hii. You just learned the 1000 most useful phrases in Swahili. And if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2000 word list. With this, you'll understand 95% of the language, and best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to swahilipod101.com now. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamba gaje. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamba gaje. Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Huwa unapaka rangi kila siku? Ndio. Kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi hadi saa moja jioni. Kuanzia saa tatu hadi saa moja? Ni masaa kumi. Ndio. Hii ni kazi yangu. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini mwanamume anapaka rangi? Huwa unapaka rangi kila siku? Ndio. Kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi hadi saa moja jioni. Kuanzia saa tatu hadi saa moja? Ni masaa kumi. Ndio. Hii ni kazi yangu. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time.
Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani, ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Mwanamke anamuuliza muuzaji jambo katika duka la vitabu. Mwanamke huyu anataka kukitazama kitabu gani? Samahani. Ningelipenda kutazama kitabu katika rafu ile ya vitabu. Ni kitabu kipi unachokitaka? Kile cha magari. Ngoja kidogo tafadhali. Hiki? Ndiyo. Hiki hapa. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with the easiest one. Asante. Asante. Another way to say thank you is Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Finally, here's a third way to express your gratitude. Asanteni. Asanteni. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Asante. Asante. Nashkuru. Nashkuru. Asanteni. Asanteni. Well done. You just learned three different ways to say thank you in Swahili. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Swahili from the very first lesson, go to SwahiliPod101.com. See you next time. Yes, it's Medina again. Welcome to SwahiliPod101. This is Topwords. Today, we're going to look at the top 25 verbs in Swahili. Welcome. Kua, to be. The first verb is kua. To be, kuwa. For example, we can say, Ili kukua katibu mwema, inabidi ujue kuratibu. In order to be a good secretary, you have to be good at organizing. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda. Bila shaka na kupenda, of course I like you. That's quite a handy word to use. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya mazoezi kutakusaidia kupoteza uzido. Doing exercises will help you lose weight. Kusema, to say. Kusema, to say. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. I taught my toddler to say, you're welcome, when he's told, Thanks. Kueleza to explain. Kueleza to explain. We can say, 
ubao weupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. A whiteboard is a perfect means to explain something visually. Ubao mweupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia. Kifaru ana hisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. Kifaru ana hisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. The rhino has a good sense of hearing and smelling. Kwenda to go. Kwenda to go. Kwenda. Nataka kwenda dukani. I want to go to the shop. Nataka kwenda dukani. Kujua to know. Kujua to know. Kujua. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Me too. I'm happy to know you. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Don't forget to take my picture. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Kuona to see. Kuona to see. Kuona. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Bye. See you again. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Kuja to come. Kuja to come. Kuja. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. If possible, I would like to come back tomorrow. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. Kufikiria, to think. Kufikiria, to think. Kufikiria. Fikiria unachotaka, unipe jibu kesho. Think about what you want and give me the answer by tomorrow. Fikiria unachotaka, unipe jibu kesho. Kuangalia, to look. Kuangalia, to look. Kuangalia. Hangeweza kusita, kuangalia kwenye sinema. She couldn't stop looking at the screen. Hangeweza kusita, kuangalia kwenye sinema. Kutaka, to want. Kutaka. To want. Ninataka kuenda kulala mapema leo. I want to go to sleep early today. Ninataka kuenda kulala mapema leo. Kupea, to give. Kupeana, to give. Hawa kupeana ya kutosha. They didn't give enough. Hawa kupeana ya kutosha. Kutumia, to use. Kutumia, to use. Ni laini gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Which line am I supposed to use? Ni laini gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Kutafuta to find. Kutafuta to find. Usipoteze wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Don't waste time looking for the ultimate job. Just start working. Usipoteze Wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwa hakika tunahofia. Lakini hawezi enda nje leo siku. We are really sorry but you cannot go out tonight. Kwa hakika Tuna hofia, lakini hawezi kwenda nje leo usiku. Kuuliza, to ask. Kuuliza, to ask. Nita kuuliza mara nyingine moja. I will only ask you one more time. Nita kuuliza mara nyingine moja. Kufanya kazi, to work. Kufanya kazi. To work. 
Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. I request that you help me do this work. Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. Kuingia to enter. Kuingia to enter. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. You cannot enter without permission. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. Kuhisi to feel. Kuhisi to feel. Kuhisi. Na hisi vizuri. I feel good. Na hisi vizuri. Kujaribu to try. Kujaribu to try. Kujaribu. Ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu. I would like to try something I've never tried before. Ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. People usually leave home for work at sunrise. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. Kuita to call. Kuita to call. Kuita. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. I will call once I arrive home. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. How was it? If you liked it, please, we'd like to hear your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lessons. See you then. Bye. Kwaheri. Trying to learn Swahili? You need a SwahiliPod101.com free lifetime account. It's one of the most powerful language learning tools you can command, and signing up takes less than seven seconds. So what exactly do you get that makes it so special? First, new lessons are published every week, and you get them for free. Enjoy learning with fun and effective audio and video lessons with real teachers. Make the most of your study time as our teachers help you hack Swahili, and get you speaking in minutes. Second, free instant access to the first three lessons of every lesson series. Explore and try any lesson series that interests you, from beginner to advanced. Find teachers you love and lessons for your goals. Third, learn Swahili anywhere, anytime with the free companion app. Download it now for free for the iPhone, iPad, or any Android device and have instant access to your free lifetime account and lessons anywhere, anytime. Fourth, boost your vocabulary with the free word of the day. Every day, receive one new word in your inbox that you can master in seconds. Want even more words? Five, get complete access to our word and phrase lists. Wow native Swahili speakers with cool, topical, and seasonal words and phrases from our lists. And finally, number six, the best for last. Seven days of unlimited access to our entire library of audio and video lessons. Premium study tools like line-by-line -line audio, word bank, and smart flashcards to help you learn lightning fast. Get your free lifetime account right now at swahilipod101.com. Sign up in less than seven seconds and the account is yours for free for life. So what are you waiting for? Get yours now. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jumbo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo is one of the most 
simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say jumbo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is habariza mchana. Good afternoon. Habariza mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari za mchana. Habari means news. So you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time and, you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question, Jina lako nani? What's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I did not want to meet you, you know. <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani. How are you? Habari gani? How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around. But, you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, na wewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern, so you ask, Na wewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say, Tafadhali, excuse me, Tafadhali, Tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to tafadhali. Please. You know, asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you receive from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu. You're welcome. Karibu. You're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstances when someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke. But you know what? You can go and ask the 
you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu i mean that's a joke <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously though <laughs> dio yes dio yes dio dio is a response whenever someone asks a question you can say dio if it's a positive answer i mean to the question i mean it, it depends you know there are the yes no questions yeah that is why it lies dio umefika kenya dio umekula chakula dio umefika kenya means have you arrived in kenya you'll say yes which is dio have you eaten food umekula chakula you'll say dio yes hapana no hapana no hapana hapana is an answer to the yes no question just like dio dio means yes as we looked at it previously now here it's no umefika kenya hapana have you arrived in kenya no umekula chakula have you eaten food no hapana sawa okay sawa okay sawa okay sawa Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Ni sangapi? What time is it? Ni sangapi? What time is it? Ni sangapi? Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off the check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Ni sangapi? Msala ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadhali, msalani ni wapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo, wait a moment. Subiri kidogo, wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word, just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini? How much is this? Beyahini nini? How much is this? Beyahini nini? How much is this? Beyahi nini? Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo nini? How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with how him, you'll definitely say, Bye, see you later when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, Kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country. The toughest moments was when we were parting, you know? I will never want to say kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to utter it out, but I will just say it with tears 
rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, quite hairy. It's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say Sijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Iswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers 1 to 10. Do you still remember? Let's go through them once more. Moja, Billy, Tatu, Nne, Tano, Sita. Saba, Nane, Tisa, Kumi. And now, let's continue from 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. Kumi na tisa. Okay. Now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Kumi na moja. Kumi na mbili. Kumi na tatu. Kumi na nne. Kumi na tano. Kumi na sita. Kumi na saba. Kumi na nane. Kumi na tisa. These numbers might seem long and a little difficult, but the idea is actually very simple. Just take kumi and add any one of the numbers between 0 and 10 that you learned in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at 11. Kumi na moja. Kumi is 10. Join it with moja, 1, using na. Together we have kumi na moja. Kumi na moja. You can do the same with other numbers. Now, do you realize the advantage of mastering the first numbers you learned in the previous lesson? Moving on. 20 and other multiples of 10 take different names. Let's go through them. Ishirini. Ishirini. Thelathini. Thelathini. Arobaini, Arobaini, Hamsini, Hamsini, Sitini, Sitini, Sabini, Sabini, Themanini, Themanini, Tisini, Tisini, and lastly, Mia Moja, Mia. Moja. All these numbers take a ni 
at the end, except for mir, meaning hundred. This is an easy way to remember these numbers. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Check the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the first lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 38 in Swahili? Let's take it step by step. 30 is telathini and then add 8, nane. In between telathini and nane is the conjunction na, meaning and, to join them. Telathini na nane. It's as simple as that. Let's try another one, like 72. First, take 70, sabini, and then add 2, bili, to get sabini na bili. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When you want to count beyond 100, you can use the same basic logic as with the numbers above 10. Just add the word mia moja, 100, in front of the tens. For example, 167 is mia moja sitini na saba. Mia moja sitini na saba. The next time you have trouble sleeping, try counting sheep in Swahili and see how far you can get. Would you like to go on a shopping trip in Kenya? In the next lesson, we'll get to practice the numbers by talking about prizes. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody! I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Unaweza ongea kingereza? Do you speak English? We also mentioned the word samahani, which means excuse me in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use samahani and other words when apologizing in Swahili. We should use samahani in formal situations such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Samahani, naweza giza kikombe cha kahawa? Excuse me, would I order a cup of coffee? We can also use it when asking a question. For example, Samahani, Mombasa iko wapi? Excuse me, where is Mombasa? Sometimes, we also hear people say just Samahani because it can also be used to draw someone's attention. Samahani. Samahani can be used in formal and informal situations. We can use samahani when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I am sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is niwi eradi. It means pardon me and can be used in both formal and informal situations. Niwi eradi. First, we have the Swahili word niwie, which means a consideration. Then, radhi, meaning pardon. Together, it literally means consider a pardon. But you can think of it like, pardon me. Niwie radhi. Niwie radhi. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Please, remember when you're in Kenya, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say samahani than niwie radhi. Are you able to count in Swahili? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Swahili from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Swahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Swahili. Can you remember the numbers from moja to mia moja? I hope so, because this time, you will put them into use. We will be practicing how to go shopping in Kenya. Before we start, you need to know how to say, how much is this? He ni pesangapi. He ni pesangapi. Okay, 
Are you ready? Let's go. Imagine you're in a shop in Kenya. You find something you want to buy and you want to ask how much it costs. Start by saying, Samahani. Do you remember what this means? Excuse me. Samahani, hi ni pesangapi. Samahani, hi ni pesangapi. The clerk will tell you, ni shilingi. It costs. Or more simply, they'll say the amount directly. For example, ishirini natano. What number is ishirini natano? Can you work it out? It's 25. So this phrase means it cost 25 shillings. Let's look at some more examples. Say, you see a bag that you want to buy. A bag in Swahili is beggy. So how would you ask how much it costs? Samahani, begi hi ni pesangapi. Or a pair of shoes. This makes it slightly different because you have to use the plural form. A shoe will be kiatu, but the plural for shoes is viatu. So you would ask the following question. Samahani, viatu hivi ni pesangapi? This simply means, how much are these shoes? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Credit and debit cards are not commonly used in Kenya, but you can double check by asking the following question. Now, is a lipa kwa kadia credit? Can I pay by credit card? Now, where's a lipa kwa kadia credit? Do you feel confident about counting shillings? If you don't, don't worry. We'll learn all about it next time. I'll be waiting for you in the next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu lesson. Tuonane! Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, nimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. you learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari. Then, mimini, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together, it is, Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now, let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at this together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jinalangu ni medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you'll say your full name. 
Finally, nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is habari. Mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is shikamo. Jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Do you know how to say thank you in Swahili? You learn how to say this and many other words in the next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Thanks for dropping by and see you next time. Kwa heri, tunane tena. Hamjamboni. Mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody. I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Uko tayari? Are you ready? Tuanze! So let's get started! The most commonly used informal greeting is habari. Habari. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives, but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When living in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Unongea Kingereza. Do you already know it? I'll be waiting with the answer in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Until then, tuonane! Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Swahili. Do you remember habari as an informal way of greeting someone? And shikamo, the formal version? In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? 
If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Swahili, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Unaongea Kingereza? Unaongea Kingereza? In Swahili, we sometimes use a one-word phrase that combines the subject and its verb. Unonge is a good example. Breaking this phrase down further, we have u, which is a pronoun for the subject. Na shows the subject's potential of doing an action. It makes the statement affirmative. Onge is the verb for speak. Together, we have unongea, which literally means you speak. Saying it with a higher intonation makes it a question. So, unongea means do you speak? Adding Kingereza, the word for English, will make it unongea Kingereza. This means, do you speak English? Altogether, we have unongea Kingereza. Unongea Kingereza. To learn how to properly construct one word sentences, check out our obsolete beginner series at SwahiliPod101.com. There, you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We are now going to make this sentence formal. It isn't hard. First, add the word J at the beginning of the sentence. J is a word that prompts a question. The sentence, unaongea, will change to J, unaweza ongea. Not the extra word weza, which means able. J, unaweza ongea, therefore means, are you able to? Let's look at the full sentence. J, unaweza ongea, kingereza. Do you speak English? J, unaweza ongea kingereza? Adding samahani, which means excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Samahani, unaweza ongea kingereza? The responses you'll receive could be one of these three. Ndiyo, yes. Ndiyo. Kidogo, a little. Kidogo. La, siongei kingereza? No. I don't speak English. La siongei kingereza. Since la siongei kingereza is a negative statement, we need to say la first, followed by si before the verb, and an e at the end of the verb. Also note that the verb ongei is slightly different from ongea. This is because negating in Swahili depends on the pronoun and the tense. In this example, the first person prefix si is used before the verb, and the suffix e is used at the end of the verb. As you can see, negation in Swahili follows a particular pattern. Some negations, though, require the word no, but we will talk about this in a later lesson. Now it's time for Medina's insights. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Kingereza with a different language. Here are some examples Kitalia is Italian. Kirusi is Russian, Hispania is Spanish, and Kijerumani is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression Samahani, but did you know that this can also be used as an apology? We'll be learning this in the next lesson, as well as other ways to apologize in Swahili. It's never too late to show your good manners to Kenyans. So, I'll see you in our next Kiswahili Kwa Dakika Tatu. See you next time. Kwaheri, chonane tena. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Welcome to SwahiliPod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. This lesson will be all about nambari. That's right, that means numbers. First, we'll learn the numbers from 1 to 10. They're not difficult at all, and this lesson will only take 3 minutes. Kwadakika tatu, two. Are you ready? Let's start. Moja. Moja. Mbili. Mbili. Tatu. Tatu. Nne. Nne. Tano. 
tano sita sita saba saba nane nane tisa tisa kumi kumi okay now repeat after me i'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one moja mbili tatu nne tano sita saba nane tisa kumi great job if you're wondering what comes before moja namely zero it is sufuri in swahili sufuri it's quite easy to remember right now there's no need to panic if your new Kenyan friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you'll say it. We'll use the phrase nambari yangu ni, which means my number is nambari yangu ni. Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Can you read it by yourself? Sufuri, saba, mbili, tatu, nne, nane, saba, tisa, sita, tano. Perfect. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. Kenyans consistently pronounce these numbers as they appear. So, it's easy to master them. These numbers are used to name other bigger numbers. So, this saves you the energy of having to start over again. Keep at it, because the advantages of mastering these first 10 numbers will become clear as we continue our lessons. Do you know the Swahili word for 100? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers 11 to 100 in Swahili. Before jumping in, be sure to practice the numbers we learned in this lesson from moja to kumi tuonane hamjamboni mimi ni medina hi everybody i'm medina welcome to swahilipod101.com's kiswahili kwa dakika tatu the fastest easiest, and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Swahili. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners when we thank people. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Asante. Asante. As you may have guessed, asante means Thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Sana means a lot. So, asante sana is just like saying thank you very much. In the last lesson, we talked about the informal and formal ways of speaking Swahili. But asante will work in both situations, so there's no need to worry. So how do you reply to thank you in Swahili? It's easy. There are two ways of doing it. The main way is to say, Karibu. This means, you're welcome. Karibu. Literally, this phrase means, welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression, Kamwe. Kamwe. Literally, this phrase means, not at all, or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked. So it's like saying, don't mention it. So when someone says asante to you, you can simply reply with karibu or kamwe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use asante or asante sana, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. 
You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Asante can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Do you know what habari means? In our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu lesson, you learn this and other greetings in Swahili. Tuonane! Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets.